Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you all so, so much for being here for a simple uh, conversation I like to call New Year Still Black. Um, I am your host, ish guy, whatever, Omega, also known as Critical Bard. Um, as you all know, I'm a hot ass fucking mess. And that's what this uh, conversation is going to be about. Just us enjoying our presence and uh, being black within said presence. And just being candid about how we feel. Uh, Let's go around and introduce our lovely uh, melanin proficient individuals uh, joining me today. Uh, We're going to go in the order I see you on the overlay uh, clockwise. So TK, say your name, pronouns, all that stuff. Who you are, what you do. Hello, it's me. It's TK. Um, I uh, what I do is have a half a bottle of champagne before this very important ch- panel. So if you see me acting erratically at all, that is the culprit. Uh, my mother is white, so I don't never learned how to act right. Um... I write spooky stories on the internet. If you like to read spooky stories, then you can read them at my website, tkjwrites.com, or follow me on Twitter, TK Joins the Fray. Uh, I'm just here to, to hang out with my little, my Mahindi soft gala. Uh, that, that is a corn pattern, by the way. Mahindi is corn. Um, and that's, that's it. I'm here for this incredible um, moment with my cousins to just sit around and talk about the culture, which I love because I live in Kentucky, so I very rarely get to see more than one Black person at a time. Mm, and pronouns? Uh, they, them. Sorry, I forgot the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's all good. It, it ain't a Black uh, event without somebody forgetting to do something. Um, yep. No shade. That's just the truth. Hey, yeah, Brian. I, was the, I was the cousin who went for a walk before Thanksgiving. <laughs> Bless. Uh, Brian? <laughs> oh wow okay we're going on like that hi <laughs> uh hi brian or bohemian pronouns are he him a uh, variety streamer on twitch a few days a week um i had words um i've also i've also <laughs> been you know doing the thing. Oh, um, my ears. sorry and uh <laughs> basically i have not been able to see my family at all this year so a lot of a lot of the black content creators on twitch have basically become like hanging out with them has has been like having the family chats so uh, i'm looking forward to uh to this talk and i'm looking forward to polishing off a ton more of this wine um i'm not trying to catch up with with tk you know it's not a race it's not a challenge it's not tk i see you it's not um but yeah happy to be here hell yeah a uh, uh, vanessa Vanessa. Sorry, I'm still I'm I'm still terrified at everything that's happening right now. But hi, hi, I'm Vanessa. Most of you know me as Pleasantly Twisted over here on twitch.tv slash pleasantly twisted. I'm the lead artist of Motherlands. I made the pretty art shit. And um, if you've ever been to my Twitter, you know very loudly and clearly I talk about the black shit, I talk about the gay shit, and then I probably just drag politics because why not? We already got everything else going, so we get the trifecta. Um I'm sober. I am consuming water with lemon juice because I'm detoxing before I eat pizza. And uh, I probably have the most coherent intro thus far, which is terrifying because I'm a disaster. By the way, my pronouns are she, her, for those of you who do not know. (laughs) Let's go. Uh, (laughs) Gabe. I will always call you Gabe. I don't know why. I can't call you Gabe. It's always Gabe. That's fine. I accept it. Hi, I'm Gabe uh, at Gabe James Games across the internet. He, him. I'm a designer, cosplayer, voice actor. I worked on Motherlands. I worked on uh, into uh, the Mwangi Expanse uh, book for Paizo that's coming out this year. Um, I've, I've spent a lot of time like being raised around Africans, both from Nigeria and Uganda. Uh, one of the closest family friends of mine, uh, Auntie Bami, then there was Auntie Orese. Like, it's it's been a pretty common thing. I was gifted this dashiki, actually, uh, I think my 15th birthday, and I didn't really grow, so <laughs> it still fits. Um, yeah, so I do a lot. This man said 15th birthday. Yeah. I mean, I feel that, though, because I was 5'3 when I was 10, and they're like, she's going to grow up to be a great, like, athlete and everything else. Y'all, I'm 34, and I'm still 5'3. I want my money back. 
I got lied to. <laughs> Me too. Terribly. When I was in when I was in fifth grade, they were like, "You're gonna grow up to be so tall." And my dad was like, "You peaked. This is it. You five two. You peaked. That's it. This is as good as it gets. From here on out, you only get smaller." And then I'm six four. Uh, moving on, Tanya. <laughs> don't even know what to say anymore i was sitting here like what do i say and y'all have just the tracks just disappeared the tracks have walked away they're on their way to another state and the train is still going just so we're <laughs> clear uh my name is tanya cypher tier i do way too much stuff on the internet but i am the creator and creative director of into the motherlands um brian also did the voiceover for that and a commercial for us over on um Oh God, what is the McElroy's podcast? I forgot. The Adventure Zone. Uh, thank you. Um, but yeah, I do that variety streamer. Uh, been on Twitch seven years, partnered going on four years as of today, new year. Um, now former DM of Rivals of Waterdeep. We come back in a month. Brian is also joining us on that. Let's see what happens. Because uh, Lisa has been gone for a whole season and she's not a happy girl. Oh. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I do that People don't already know. And you know, even cough, cough. Uh what the 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 thing you just got a couple of days ago. Mm. <coughs> you don't fine, say it, I will. <coughs> fine. Um, since CB shaming me. Um, I was very surprised to see Kotaku name me as one of the gamers of the year, along with friends, uh X Mira Mira and Abonic Sims. And I don't know Hassan. I'm sure he's a cool guy. I I don't know, but he's in there too. Wasn't, but wasn't, wasn't there also a future class? I was about to say, what about that future class? The future class thing. What about that? Yeah, we coming for you. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The edges are being snatched. We coming for you. Snatched. Just obliterated. You know what? I can just cover over my mic. Cover over my camera. It's like fine. (laughs) Y'all want to talk for me? Then you gonna talk for me. (laughs) But yes, I'm also part of the Game Awards future class, along with 49 of my colleagues. You all. Uh, do a lot for gaming, whether it's making games, streaming them, all sorts of things. So I've had a very interesting 2020. Um, anything else you want to wrap me out on since since y'all are talking for me? I'm sitting here trying to think of it, and Brian right. beat me to the future class one. I, I know, I know. There's a list. There's a there's a a whole uh, cover letter. A, a whole... I mean, you've been in a bunch of articles and stuff quoted too about diversity. So I don't, I don't know. We'll just say you do everything like you said before. Much, yeah. was, I'm just gonna be like, it's like this is Tanya, New York Times published pass. <laughs> I mean, Rivals was in the New York Times last year. Hey, let's go. <laughs> that yeah. still counts as 2020 we're only one day into 2021 so 2020 that's the big thing i'm Look, sorry tanya will never uh uh be able to handle uh us uh, uh complimenting her and guess what it's not gonna stop so love you sorry about it not sorry uh, you know, my high <laughs> yellow ass cannot hide a blush even with makeup on. So thank you. I'm trying to sit here with my little cup of wine and be humble and talk. And y'all just won't let me live my my quiet little mousy life. <laughs> always, I haven't gotta... always gas up your friends. Always hype them up. Always gas them up. Because, uh, you know, sometimes we all have to remember that we're pretty fucking awesome. Period. Mm. Uh, mm. If a, if a moderator can do the, uh, the the command for the supporting these uh, amazing people on this uh, on this panel right now, because throughout 2020, even though we all know it was a cluster of many folks, um, these uh, amazing uh, individuals plus many other folks, I'm focus on these five right now. Don't get mad. Uh, these uh, five folks have done so much uh, in the last 365 days. So please support them in all ways that you can, whether it is you know following them on the Twitter earth or the instagrams or youtubes or whatever they have um um um, with permission giving them monies uh because guess what we still creators uh we still gotta pay bills and shit um so uh thank you all so much for joining me um and you all know me omega jones also known as critical bard actor vocalist hot mess incarnate black af uh hashtag iconic uh and just trying to live my uh, my bardic life one one troublemaker at a time you already know um a couple of things before we actually get started um i we are well, I am with them now. Um, for the last seven days, I've been raising money for Color of Change. Color of Change is a nice organization that focuses on battling racial injustice um, and specifically focusing on making the world a little less, you know, of a of a um, 
a struggle, if you will, for black Americans. Uh, we've raised four thousand uh forty one dollars and thirty six uh, cents. Um, so far, I would love to hit that four thousand five hundred mark uh, by the end of this panel. Uh, and, you know, we can go farther than that, too, because, you know, the Bible said and black folk need our flowers, Lations, that uh, we should be able to uh, thrive without, um, you know, having to worry about bullshit every every second of our lives. So uh, please, uh, if you can hit that uh, goal, I would absolutely love it. You can go to the Tiltify link in the uh, in the chat. Um, that my moderators, thank you so much, moderators, hype for the moderators right now, that my moderators are um, um, looking at and, and, and keeping uh, forward for everyone. Um, today, again, you you know, we do the Black as Fuck Roundtables. Today is not that. Today is us just living our, living our last lives, uh, living our lives and, um, and chatting about life and stuff. Like today is the last day of Kwanzaa, if you didn't know that. Um, so that's a good place to start. Um, uh, do you all celebrate Kwanzaa or what has Kwanzaa meant for you? Um, does anybody even know what Kwanzaa is? Uh, like, let's just, let's, let's chat. Let's chat y'all. <laughs> so <clears throat> I was going to go ahead. Cause I've been thinking about it since you first pitched it. Kwanzaa was one of those things that I knew about it, but I never knew about it well, because in my upbringing, this is me realizing I have to give flowers to my black elementary school teachers because goddamn did they try. They tried and tried and tried because that was the only time it was ever even introduced to me, let alone enforced around me because my mom was insistent on being very, very Catholic. And so the idea of doing Kwanzaa just, but I knew what it was at the bare minimum. And so, and I said this in our chat too, y'all gonna make me compliment that damn bird app because <laughs> I've learned more about Kwanzaa through people that I hang out with and associate with now on Twitter than I ever did in any of my upbringing. And I'm thinking next year, especially, I'm gonna try and actually introduce it and be more engaged in celebrating with it because I didn't feel it would be right for me to just kind of out the gate be like, oh yeah, we've been talking about all the black shit all year. We all black everything. We gonna talk about Kwanzaa. Girl, you ain't celebrated Kwanzaa a day of your life. Let's not do this. <laughs> Let's That's not real. do this. Let's not be that person, please and thank you. But that was my whole thing I had about it because otherwise I don't have much to contribute past that. Uh, I want to uh, jump in really quickly for those in chat who don't know Kwanzaa uh, which is derived from the phrase Matunda i Kwanzaa which means first fruit in Swahili uh, was created by Dr. Maulana Karinga back in 1966 um, in Los Angeles <laughs> fun fact it is not an African holiday it's an African American holiday It's a uh, he wanted a way to bring together African Americans as a community um, and through that and through time it's, it's become this, this celebration of whether it's black excellence, black pride, black struggle, black whatever, just us, you know, being who we are. There are seven principles, the Nguzo Saba, um, which means seven principles. Uh, and uh, and it's it's a way to just remember who we are and why we do what we do. Um, it's an amazing holiday. I again, I knew about it for years in years of my life, I never really took the the jump to really start celebrating it until this year. Um, and I actually, I, I, it's the same thing with you. It kind of happened because of Twitter. Um, not just because of Twitter, but all the things that have happened this year that made me like really hone in on my blackness and, 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 and making sure that I was being true to my blackness and i was like well then why the fuck have i not celebrated one of the only uh holidays that is about blackness <laughs> so uh I, it's been really cool for me to um to dive in into this part of my culture that i never really um allowed myself to dive into and now uh, this is it um so yeah um for me i too grew up in the very catholic households um, you know, mom was Vatican II all the way. And, you know, but I did go to an all black high school and grade school. And so it wasn't like I didn't know Kwanzaa existed, but it wasn't a thing we did at home. It was, no, you go into mass, you bring your ass home. You, you do your hour in, hour out, we're home in time for football. That was what I was raised with. So I, I knew it existed and we got it with our, it's February. You should learn about this thing that we're not going to acknowledge come December anyway, because we won't be in school when Kwanzaa happens. So like everybody else, I'm like, oh yeah, Twitter, it's actually useful on occasion. It's not always evil. Um, so I've actually been a crib note 
before we got on this call, like, again, I know it existed. I have followed our friends that have talked about it. And actually, if not for TK's posts, I would have been like, oh, yeah, it's Kwanzaa. Shit. <laughs> Gabe, Brian, TK? Mm. It was not, it was not really, um, I mean, my family was not, was non-specifically religious. Um, you know, we were uh, basically Southern, grew up in the South, um, went to the local Baptist church, but there was a point in the eighties when all of the, um, essentially all the black families who had through whatever, through whatever company means allowed them to live in the suburbs. Um, if anybody here knows of like the organization, Jack and Jill, it, it kind of at that point had a reputation for, okay, that's like, that's like the bougie black people, like, you know, scouts for their kids to do things. So everybody really got into celebrating Kwanzaa for a very short period of time. And it was like, you know, Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa. So learned about it. Um, and, um, and even now, like my mother has an, a store that is devoted to African-American, not African, but African-American art. So um, she also you know, she'll have the candle, she'll have a canara, she'll have a lot of it in the art, but we don't really celebrate it. So it is, I'm, I'm in the same boat. Like if somebody asks me about it, I'm like, hold up, let me just go quick the, uh, let me go check the seven principles real quick. Let me get the crib sheet and uh, I'm good. But yeah, it's, it's not something that I, it's not something I celebrate. I feel that. It's been, it's been interesting for me because um, my mom has talked about it because my mom was alive when like Kwanzaa was founded. Like she has talked to me about remembering uh, it like being announced the first time and when he was uh, deciding on creating it as like a celebration and a holiday. And it's never been like a largely prevalent thing, I feel like in my household. Um, and I don't know if it's because my family has been involved with so much African influence continuously. Like I talked about the family friends that were more than just friends like we were at their house all the time so it, it was less of like I think I think it was I think the African influence of my household was almost normalized to the point that Kwanzaa wasn't as much of a prevalent thing for us because it was in a pretty much everyday part of our life hmm. that's very interesting I know I know uh our auntie up here uh, want to chat because it's been making me so happy each time I wake up and see Habaragani, what's the news? And seeing you <laughs> talk about each of the seven principles. So like I definitely want to get your your um your um your thoughts on so um so I'm biracial, uh clearly. Um starting to sober up and learn how to act right. Um my father's family was also split between two different faiths. His mother was all is very Baptist. Um, however, a lot of his uh, father's side of the family lives in Louisiana, and they are um, they are Ifa animists. Uh, so they they follow a lot of the Orisha, um, uh, such as uh, Yamaya, um, Oshun, Shango, um, etc. Uh, issue, um, and so they are the ones that are more likely to celebrate Kwanzaa because they still consider themselves Americans and thus separate from uh, Africans. Uh, so as we said, Kwanzaa is an, an African-American holiday. Um, I did not grow up with that. Uh, that was something that I looked into. My father never uh, discouraged me from looking into that side of my family or anything, but um, didn't exactly put it right in front of me either. So when I came into adulthood, I started getting more in touch with like that side of the family. I started celebrating Kwanzaa just after Ferguson um, because I was in hair school at the time and I live in rural Kentucky uh, in an area that it has very heavy influence from like the KKK and things like that. Um, and celebrating Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa and wearing soft gala and... Uh, things like that. Uh, I also, I teach pre-colonial Western African history with an mm. emphasis on 1500s uh, old Oyo empire, which is Southern Nigeria. Um, so all of those things became sort of subtle ways that I could, I felt like I could really fight back and protect my identity in an area that 
was more than happy to snuff it out if mm. they if they got the chance. So I've been I've been celebrating Kwanzaa for about um, five years with my husband, um, and uh, I mean we we do very solitary. The first year we did have we had a a, a canara, we had um, the mats, uh, we we put out produce and everything. Um, unfortunately, Kwanzaa is at its best with large families so a, a cup of unity between two people is sort of like oh we're getting married <laughs> so, you know um but you know I still sometimes hang up my um I have uh these banners that have each of the principles on them that mm -hmm. I'll decorate like the the wall with and stuff and they're they're in the kitchen right now so I good times that. um I want to uh uh look at the um the seven principles really quickly because even if you don't celebrate Kwanzaa, the seven principles, um, the Nguzo Saba, um, they en encapsulate and, and like they really th there's something you can take in, take from it, even if you're you're you know, you're white or you're whatever you identify as, um, because they're just principles that you as a human being can look at and and take something from. Um uh, the first one is umoja, which means unity. All of these words are Swahili. If you didn't, I said that multiple times, but just in case. Um, all these words are uh, Swahili. Umoja means unity, and it says to strive for and maintain unity in the family, community, nation, and race. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, honestly. Just striving for that connection between your fellow brother and sisters or cousins or whoever uh, you want to have that connection with. Um, striving for that unity within each other, because once you're all unified, there is something greater that can come from that. Um, the next uh, principle is kuti jakulia, uh, which is self-determination. Um, to define ourselves, name ourselves, create for ourselves, and speak for ourselves. Again, pretty self-explanatory. It's the idea of knowing who you are and being strong in who you are, because when you're strong in who you are, you can then start to better those around you because you are grounded in yourself. Um, the next one is Ujima, or Ujima, uh, collective work and responsibility to build and maintain our community together and make our brothers and sisters problems our problems and to solve them together. It's the idea of I am because we are the idea of if you're going through it, I'm going to help you because when you're better, I'm better. And when I'm better, you're better. And together it's, it's just, it's, it's all about that. You know, if I'm struggling or if you're struggling and I'm not, why would I walk past you while you're in your struggle? Let me help you out of that struggle. Cause once you're fine, that gets collectively makes everyone fine. Um, you know, um, Ujama, which is co cooperative economics, to build and maintain our own stores, shops, and other businesses, and to profit from them together. That is, at, at its base, supporting black businesses or supporting businesses that your fellow folk um, create versus, you know, executive I ideals out there it's supporting those that are right in front of you um for instance you there are there are six of us on this page right now supporting us as our own in individual creatives um is what this principle stands for supporting those businesses supporting each other and the things that we create and the things that we do so that we are thriving because again once we thrive we all thrive right um, Nia, which is purpose to make our collective vocation, the building and developing of our own community in order to restore our people to their traditional greatness. This is simply who am I as a person? What do I represent? What is my purpose? What am I giving? And once you really hone in on that and understand that, again, you are only building yourself so that you're better prepared to go out in the world and help those and be those and be your to be your true self so that others can also be their true self. You see how all of these principles are lining in and, and helping and taking from each other. It's that ebb and flow. It's it's ugh, oh, sorry. I'm like in my feelings because I love Kwanzaa. <laughs> um, Kumba, which is probably my favorite, is creativity to do always as much as we can in the way we can in order to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than we inherited it. It's the idea of 
once you know who you are, now what are you creating? What are you putting out there? What are you personally, individually doing? What is your creative outlet? Not literally artistic, but what are you doing that's unique and thus is going to make the world better than what you found it when you first walked into it? Again, I'm a creator. I'm a, I'm a black as fuck, queer as fuck content creator. I'm striving to curate a community and I'm doing it in my own way. Therefore, my community is now uplifted and I'm bringing something to Twitch that isn't there right now. That's my creativity. That's my Kuwumba. Um, And today, which is the last day of Kwanzaa, which is why I was very excited to do this. Today is Imani and Imani means faith. To believe with all our heart in our people, our parents, our teachers, our leaders, in the righteousness and the victory of our struggle. The idea of, I know, like, to put it out there, 2020 was a shitstorm for everyone. Whether I mean, it had a lot of good, but it also had a lot of bad. And we all know that. But I have faith that 2021 is going to be better because I am putting it into the world right now. I am believing that throughout all the chaos and trials and tribulations that we went through in this last 365 days, that starting today and going forth, it is going to be better because I am making sure that it's going to be better. Um with those seven principles in mind, does anyone in those uh, does any one of those resonate with you personally? Um, and why? I would love to know your thoughts on those seven principles that create Kwanzaa. For me, it's definitely the final one because that's kind of been <clears throat> kind of my praxis for the entirety of my time on Twitch. Really quickly. Like ever- Really quickly, I'm so sorry. I was over talking, and we didn't way past five thousand. Yes, <laughs> yes, you did. You I know didn't way past. See that. You haven't. Just, you just going on, hey, on, on, on. You hadn't seen me in chat just being a little troll and being like another one, <laughs> another one, <laughs> another one. Jesus. And then no. I was just like push it, and I'm like putting the smug emote in every way. Push it, push it. You won't <laughs> push it. <laughs> You might want to raise that. I'm about to. Push it. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Color change will really benefit from this. I appreciate y'all being here and listening to us just be our authentic selves. Let me raise it. 7,500. I don't know. We might have hit it, but let's do it. 7,500 sound good. That sounds like a nice number. Let's do it. That's a real nice round number. Should we throw that out? Should we throw down the gauntlet on Twitter? I was going to say, where's that that Mm. link? Oh. There's a link that goes out in the chat and stuff. It would be a shame if people in chat push that link out on Twitter to help people get more donations in. Uh, that's real, shame. Oh. Real, shame. real shame. Yeah, mm-hmm. that y'all shame. won't. Let me. Uh, but you won't. Uh, but you won't. Hold on. Let me text a couple people. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, no, wow. like realness. Y'all scared. I was like, but realness, like what even just happened right there, is why I say it's the final principle because. I didn't realize that that's kind of what I was doing with my community from the get go. Like the moment that I realized I could put something back out into the world to kind of make it better than when I left it last is really, really the entire emphasis of my community. And I want people in my community to grow and do better and learn. Sometimes you got to ban motherfuckers to do that, but you know, it is what it is. And it's about trying to facilitate and see that world that you want at the end of the day. And I try to tell people all the time, especially for how much I'm involved in activism, I don't expect everything to be fixed in my lifetime. I don't, but that's not a valid reason for me to be like, so guess I won't do shit. Cause I think about it like I have younger siblings. I have nieces and nephews. The shit that I've had to put up with, not just 2020, but in general, I don't want them to have to put up with that ever ever at all. I would love to be on my like last legs and stuff and have my niece approach me and tell me about being some flavor of queer and how she has tons of video game friends and she's online and she doesn't hear slurs or just something like she got even the slightest hint of an opportunity because that's still better than when I left it. And that's my goal with stuff. So it's definitely the last principle for me personally. I love that. Mm -hmm. I'm stuck because my creativity has suffered over 2020. And uh, my faith that things will get better right now isn't great. 
I know it's it's first day of new year, but hey, it is what it is. Um, but I got a lot of the of uh, and I'm gonna butcher this. I know. Kuji, check. I'm gonna fuck it up. Uh, self determination. Kuji Dakolia. Yeah. Thank you. I I, got I you. can say whole other languages, but can't look at that and pronounce it. I'm sorry. <laughs> to be My fair, my ancestors are gonna jump up and find me. I remember really quickly. I remember when I was in. I want to say I was in first grade. I do not remember this song and I have searched for this song, but I remember there was a song that my, my mom used to always say. And the specific part I always remember is Gucci, Jagalia, Imani, Ania, hey, doom, 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 doom. Like it start going in that one part. So that's the only I ha- reason I, I know how to another, say Gucci, Jagalia. Uh, <laughs> I have a song that, that taught me like, and it goes, Umoja, unity, Umoja, community. And that's all I remember of that song. <laughs> I've been celebrating Kwanzaa for five years, and that's the first time I've heard K- K- Kuji Chagulia like pronounced because I've always said Kuji Chagulia. Ooh. Either way, I just no, well, just because I just read it, so I've never heard another person like actually say it. or that's struggle bad. to say it. In my case. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you know, I'm just trying to get to a place of. I like to be able to do stuff and not just be rooted at home because other people's selfishness. Yeah. So. Yeah, I... Oh, goodness, I thought I was muted. Um, mm-hmm. I think for me, Ujima, the collective work and responsibility is something that I always, you know, not just at Kwanzaa, but always, I am much more about, like, what we can do together, um, what our communities can do for each other, what we can do collectively, um, and, and, you know, being able to, being able to help others with their problems, not necessarily burdening yourself, but being able to come together, um, the way that many people on this call have come together for like charity before, and that we've come together to support each other, that like the rising tide, that kind of community that I know that I have found online, I have, I have found on Twitch and other people have talked about on Twitch during all of this that is um that's something that is really powerful to me um among these principles and um i know a lot of people like without having an online without having the community that we found for ourselves in 2020 would not have made it through as well as we have that's real i think imani is the one for me um because it's like having having a sense of faith that especially now when people are supporting you or give the appearance of supporting you that it's genuine and it's very hard to it's very hard for me to navigate if I don't believe that because like then I get too used to looking over my shoulder or double checking intentions so even like sometimes when it might be like even more in a naive sense having the faith that it is genuine and then moving forward with that has definitely helped me uh, progress a lot of things that I needed to do and wanted to do and might have had like reservations or hesitations to do beforehand. Um, and for me, honestly, I mean, I mean, I, I kind of already hit on the Nakumba has always um, been my, my, well, the idea of Kumba was the creativity, uh, being creative and making sure that I am putting forth something new into this world has always been um, something that, means a lot to me but also nia knowing what my purpose is in this world knowing why i do what i do i i mean not to go into like deep dark sadness but like i mean i mean like, and i'm sure most of us possibly have gone through this you know this childhood was rough childhood was very rough i was in foster care three-fourths of my uh, uh young life before i hit 18 um so i never knew who i was supposed to be because i felt like the life i could have had was taken from me and I was forced in this new this new life that like, what is this? I'm here because the state of Missouri put me here because you had nowhere else to go because of all the bullshit that happened in the past. So with that, I I finally had a sit down with myself and was like, what am I doing? I've already taken back my agency um, and I've already said this is i'm standing my ground this is what i'm going to be for the rest of my time until i age out but who am i as a person and what do i want to do and when i finally figured that out which is just be a strong person strong black man strong black gay man 
um, living his best life and inspiring the next generation to also do the same. That's when I knew what I could then start putting out. And that's where that creativity came in. Once I knew my purpose, I knew how to be creative and push that into the world. So we have more collective responsibility, you know, just, uh, sorry. Uh, it, 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 it just allowed me to be grounded in, in my truth. Um, and I think that's really cool. Um, the thing, the thing about Kwanzaa is that um, you don't have to celebrate it. If you're a black person in the in the in in the chat right now, or uh, or you know any any one of the panelists, it's not like you are forced to ever celebrate this this holiday just because you have melanin in your in your system. Um, but with the world and how what has happened in the last year, is this something you'd ever be interested in now looking into? Or, you know, how, how, how is it resonating now, now that we've gone through this struggle as a community together? I'm just curious. Oh, you know what? I decided before I even did this that not only am I going to start celebrating Kwanzaa because I am a, uh, I don't want to say lapsed Catholic because I'm not going back. I gave up Catholicism and all of that one year during Lent and never looked back. I'm going to celebrate this because those principles align more with what I want to do as a person. Cause you know, even, even at my closer to 50 than I'd like age, I'm still learning and I know that I can still improve and that there's a lot of those principles that I don't always embody, be it out of pettiness, spite, anger, what have you, I can do better. And also I'm trying to embody that more because I don't, I don't know if TK can, can, uh, confirm this, but being not so melanated, just enough to not be white, but not quite what other people think of as black, there's a whole struggle of you're black, but are you really black enough? And I'm trying to reconcile that even at 40 something years old. Yeah, for sure. There is definitely, I, I will, I know that like black people don't need to hear it from me um, being biracial, but like you are not insufficiently black for not celebrating kwanzaa celebrating kwanzaa does not make me more black um but i do feel like there are principles that are uh helpful for the community political stuff aside from the creator of kwanzaa having been uh yep yep Yep. But, um, <laughs> Which is why I said what has become today versus what it was. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Um, everything besides that. But yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. I definitely um, understand the struggle of like not feeling somehow not feeling right in your own skin for being lighter than even when you were as a child. Mm. Yo, the winter. About it's not been kind. I've gone it to has the it. foundation. <laughs> I was like looking at my backdrop and I was like, are we the same? Are we? <laughs> I was like, oh. oh like TK Lord. and I are normally like oh. in the same color family. And I'm looking at this at this camera like, ooh, mm, ooh. I need sun. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, uh, sorry. Quarantine Does anybody else want to say something on that? <laughs> I'm just laughing at TK because she said one yike. Oh, I'm sorry. They said one yike. <laughs> Not yikes, one yike. One yike, just one. Exactly one. <laughs> it's a whole yike. It's very large. It is. It is a very large yike. Um, yeah, no, I totally understand. Uh, I probably will continue to celebrate Kwanzaa, and I would love to see more people in the community celebrate it with me. I would love that. But I would never pressure any of you into it, obviously. Um, there, are, there are hundreds of uh reasonable um reasons to not celebrate and uh and we no longer need kwanzaa to help us explore ourselves and our identity as a community um blackness is whatever you want it to be you know yeah and if and, and unless gabe has something that he yeah i was saying gabe brian Mm. right like y'all just sitting here we, we watching y'all be quiet mm -hmm. that's why i talk first because then i can't get dragged see wow <laughs> okay i mean um no it's the principles of it have, have been something that have always been um like since learning about them even though it was it was a very brief 
moment where our family and our friends like celebrate and embody Kwanzaa. And a lot of the reason that we stopped is because of learning more about the founder um, mm-hmm. of like the, the holiday observations traditions. Um, and it's, it's, it definitely, the principles are something that I would like to embody. So it is, I think it's difficult for me because I often don't, it's not something that my family is, is typically just not religious at all and any kind of traditions. Um, so that would, it would be, you know, like other things, just kind of like a solitary thing, but yeah, it's, it's got principles that I would like to embody and see myself and see in myself and others. So, yeah. I think it's good to see it become just more of a common, uh, I don't know if normalized is the right word for it, but just more everyday uh, recognized or at least something that people acknowledge more often because especially like during the holiday season there are there are plenty of um, different ways that people celebrate and do different holidays households will celebrate Christmas uh, and uh, Hanukkah and ha- ah, excuse me Hanukkah in the same household and uh, some people will celebrate Christmas but it's not necessarily in a sense of faith it's just a sense of what like the excitement of sharing embodies each other so seeing more people acknowledge kwanzaa and then see the principles that relate to it like even if even if it is not someone of african's descent if it is someone who sees this and is like wow that's very interesting it's it's nice to see more of that culture celebrated and even if they don't personally celebrate i like seeing people more of like oh that's you know what i do i do really support that principle it's really interesting i I can understand how important that is. And I think it gives people a whole new perspective too, like of what uh, black culture and African-American culture is because of, for obvious reasons, African-American culture having a pretty distinct start point rather than African culture uh, and its starting points. Um, Though it's not going to be a question and answer type of thing today, uh, I do want to answer this one question because it is very poignant and it's something I was going to bring up. Come from Chris Lockie. Thank you so much, Deborah Lockie. Uh, It says, in all seriousness, how can non-PLC help support or celebrate Kwanzaa? What is the line for appropriation versus honor and respect? And that's something I wanted to hit at because when I did the seven days of Kwanzaa streaming, each day I talked about a different um, the different principles that that day uh, associated uh, that was you know a part of. Um, I think it's less about how do I not appropriate it and what can I take away from it. Um, those seven principles aren't you know melanin necessary um you don't have to be black to to see something within those principles and take it for yourself uh, or uh, utilize it and, and and manifest it in your own in your own way um so looking at you know uh nia purpose you you as a non you know uh, uh as a melanin deficient person um you can still have your own purpose in what you do and how you how you live your life just because it's a part of Kwanzaa doesn't mean you can't, you know, look at it and take something from it. Um, so I, I, I won't sit there and say, don't celebrate the um, the holiday, but look at what that holiday represents and, and the principles that it strives for you to um, to take in and then take it in and, and see how you can manifest it in your own way. Um, so I don't know if anyone else has a, um, a similar or different opinion on that, but it, it's it's. At the end of the day, Kwanzaa is a time to, yes, it's celebrating blackness, but looking past that for a, a couple of seconds, looking at how we're celebrating that blackness, you can then take that and celebrate it within yourself. Also, y'all with this 69, I'm not about to play with you. <laughs> Honestly, I think you said it really well, CB. If someone, if someone takes the time to actually look through what the different values are about, if someone takes the time to read into it and learn... And then they're celebrating by representing those things. They're like, it's the difference between like do like celebrating Kwanzaa because it's a black holiday versus celebrating Kwanzaa because you appreciate the values that are related to it and can acknowledge and appreciate the culture that it's like leaning into. And that kind of response, if if there was a, a friend of mine that's white and then talk to me about like stuff of Kwanzaa that was really interesting after I had brought it up or something. And then they showed that they actually like had invested time to understand and read up and be aware. Then it 
could be a great conversation and show an appreciation. And it's not them doing this because they want to look good for their black friend. It's them doing it because they actively cared about this thing. And showing that you actively care about it is always gonna be better than faking interest. If it's not something you're interested, that's fine. Like you don't have to be excited about Kwanzaa, but if you are, I, like embrace that and don't it's the whole like don't make it a caricature thing mm -hmm. embrace it and enjoy it for your reasons because you actively think it's interesting and something to care about oh, i want to kind of equate it and it's it might be too left field but i'm gonna say it anyway i know a lot of people love watching anime and they love japanese culture but you don't got to wear a kimono and have a, a katana and do all those things while you celebrate that culture you can just love it understand what it is take those principles and the things that it it embodies and go from there you know like just because it's a black holiday doesn't mean go on and put on a dashiki and put dots on your face and start you know drumming a, a, a drum while you celebrate the inguzo saba you don't have to do all that you know just understand what that holiday is representing and how you <clears throat> as a human being can look at those uh those principles and take it in for yourself that's really it honestly mm -hmm. Um, if anyone else has anything on that, let me know. Otherwise, I I, I want to uh, go a little forward because, again, this is going to be all Kwanzaa, 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 Kwanzaa. We are black, but that's not the only thing that we are. What? Oh, what? shit. Nobody told me. Ah! <laughs> I suddenly feel less qualified to be on this panel. Oh, boy, kaboom. <laughs> <laughs> this is unfortunate well, as Kwanzaa is the blackest thing about me so I'm gonna just no. oh. I'm gonna catch y'all later I'm gonna just go no TK just, just wrap whatever that background is we won't see you oh no oh no, no TK said it first yeah, Jesus. Just, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna see y'all don't you no no <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I <laughs> And background Look. whipped out stealth mode. <laughs> then, what we're gonna quickly do, um, because I, I know we can go a lot. Oh no, no, we can go, go, we can go a little bit longer for a second. Um, so I don't want to we because it is no longer 2020. I don't want to sit there and focus on all the bad that happened in 2020 because we all know what happened. It was there. It's done. It's canceled. It's over. However, I do want to kind of because here's the thing. Yes, 2020 was what it was. But there was a lot of good that happened in 2020. There's a lot of things that we could manifest because of the things that 2020 became. Um, what is something that y'all were proud of in 2020? Um, and it doesn't have to be based in your blackness. Just us. This is just us talking as creators now. Like, what good came out of 2020 and how is that being carried into 2021? I ain't talking first. I'll talk oh. first. I'll talk first. I'll gladly talk first. Let's do it. Um, Next week, I start a new job. Um, I move into a three bedroom apartment by myself. Um, I check no. the analytics for my uh, class modifier module that I put out in July. And for a pay what you want process that has been downloaded 12,000 times, it has accumulated over $11,000. Let's go. Nice. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's good. Yo, so Gabe, how can we keep uh, buying this modifier? Throw a link in chat. There a link in. I got you. Oh, don't worry. He has a personalized oh, no. uh, 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 um, <laughs> uh, command well, already. He's got it unlocked. <laughs> like, there's there's so much more that's coming on. People were asking me. I decided I was going to do one for NPCs. Um, we got it up on Rule Twenty. I'm like, it's and it it was just it was showing like this is something that is you are able to pay for it but you don't have to and it showed that like people want well it was like that faith thing i was like you know what i'm just gonna do it i don't know if anyone's gonna care about it um i was able to pay my artist i i like she gave me the ability to use her art so i was like you know what i'm just gonna give her half um so like i was able to take care of me and my own from this thing i was able to hire more editors and work with more people it gave me new opportunities it introduced me to people and it like showed it showed you can make it happen even if you doubt yourself to do it. Hell yeah. No, that's real. Congrats to you. Because, I mean, as I said, all five of y'all have been putting in work last year. And I don't want the bullshit that was 2020 to overshadow all the success that you had. Yeah. Um, 
So like, you know, seriously, your your flowers, this is this is the time for it, whether it's chrysanthemum, rose, or some potpourri, w- what happened? You did not say potpourri. <laughs> you I said say, potpourri. Come on now. Come some on. Pot- I think that pot- 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 potpourri is not a real flower. <laughs> it is now. dead flowers. <laughs> I think they smell it's good. Dead. <laughs> but they mostly smell good because they're dead flowers and you like to have to soak them in oils and stuff. So it's not even the flowers. It's just a way to deliver your oils and shit without being weird. <laughs> anyway, TK was trying to talk. <laughs> uh, I think I think for sure that Tanya, Gabe, and I, and I think I think uh, Brian as well worked on some projects together in 2020. Actually, yeah. Right? Shoot, shout out to Tanya for like partially introducing me to some people and like TK, we you were on. to go. Yeah, no. I know. I know for sure. I'm we at home. On, yeah, we worked on Paizo stuff together, and yep. and I'm pretty sure we worked on Zweihander stuff together. Yep. yep. And so. and we talked. We worked on stuff that was emphasizing being brown. Yeah. And it was fun as hell. Was, hell it yeah! Was it was fun making brown, like brown based stuff in tabletop games because there is not enough representation. And then, like, being able to say, no, this is kind of racist, and having people say, you're right. Yeah, it's like being like, that it, you know, I didn't know, I didn't see it when you, before you said something, but now that I look at it, yeah, it's kind of a little racist. And it's like, oh. yeah, you're, you're right. <laughs> I liked, um, I will say, probably one of the best things about working on Mwangi is that, like, I don't know how y'all's writing assignments went or anything but there was like a very specific like we're not doing any noble savage tropes like type of stuff for my stuff Mm -hmm. so that was a good time uh not looking not looking to write the same like tarzan background characters tarzan (laughs) everything is incredible (laughs) i was like tarzan ain't even blackie that's the worst part (laughs) oh you know nope i'm not gonna (laughs) That was about to be that was about to be a, a historical sentence, and then I was like, mm, "Better not." <laughs> Who else? Oh no, no, go be, be proud of yourself. Um, um, I'm I'm a I'm gonna beat them to it before they like embarrass me. No, I'll throw them out of the, under the rug too. Brian, talk about that voice acting. Ooh. Oh, that. I, oh yeah. Oh, oh, wait, um, you see. No, no, no. We're going to talk about your ass, too. I've known you the longest in this chest. We're going to talk about your ass right now. That was that was really near for me that I got to do this year. That was a lot of fun. Um, I, I'm i not going to lie. Like, today, like, everyone does. Everyone does the whole, like, oh, you know, let's, let's look back. And I was looking back at, like, photos from a year ago. And I just kind of looked. Um, I looked at my Twitch stats from, like, precisely a year ago versus, so, like, December 31st like 2019 and 2020 and just the seeing the full year and you know like I still say the reason the reason for the spike and the reason for the latter half of the year being great was tragic and awful but to be able to turn that into I mean yeah like getting partnered on Twitch which I never really thought was a thing I never thought that that was in range of anything um to be able to to basically raise all of our communities to be able to um, to be able to raise a bunch of money for charity and do a lot of good and do that. And to be able to kind of have a creative outlet, which I've, since I've moved to essentially I, when I moved where, where I am now, I had to leave behind like theater, creative work, creative arts. So being able to kind of funnel that energy into Twitch has just been, it's, it's been, phenomenal it's been a balm to my soul um it's you know still as exhausting you know but it that's been great and yeah um like having people trust in whatever i do enough to take a chance on me so yes you know tanya for into the motherlands asked me to do an ad then asked me to do the voiceover intro for the show which still blows my mind like I would be skidding, I'd be skidding across my apartment to hit it just because I'm like, wait, I'm about to hear myself on Twitch. Hold up. <laughs> so yeah, that that's that's been a lot of fun. Um, being able to um, put together, like just throw together kind of a show, uh, Dungeon Crossing with Tanya and um, you know, and Gary and Adam and Shannon. That was a lot of fun. Um, 
and it was, you know, it was something that came about from, you know, Hey, do you want to get together and do a thing? And it turned into a repeating, um, turned into a repeating thing. It's, and, um, and, you know, like, it's not really a 20, it is a 2020 thing. It's not a 2021 thing, but like, you know, getting to play, getting to sit down and play a game with the, with the cast of the rivals of Waterdeep thinking, Oh, I would love to do this with y'all again sometime. Not realizing that that would actually, I, I just thought I, I, I literally meant we should do this again sometime. I, I didn't actually think that that was going to turn into, Oh, Hey, do you want to be one of the rivals? So, <laughs> so yeah, 2020, 2020, honestly, it's, we were talking on the call about how we didn't really care for the memes of new game plus or how, you know, it's still March something or other because a lot of great things. Um, I'll stop talking in a minute. So other people can gas themselves up, no, but on. a lot of great things. A lot of people here did a lot of really good things. And um, 2020 was good in a lot of ways. It sucked in a lot of ways. Like there is no doubt about that, but a lot of people did a lot of great things this year. And I am glad that those accomplishments are not completely overshadowed by the fact that 2020 was a shitty year. Yep. Keep it going, y'all. I'll keep going. I'll go last, <laughs> but keep going. Um, I said what I said. <laughs> I was hired to be the lead artist for Into the Motherlands, which again, it was three years ago. And I had convinced myself that I wouldn't be in the art circuit because I had tried and tried, nobody cared. I start losing interest in my art and everything. And then I got on Twitch and I started seeing some trash tier emails. And I was like, listen, I can draw better than this and I'm angry now. So it got me fired up about commissions and everything again. And then um, we started going back into character art like what I went to school for. And then my paths crossed with Tanya and Tanya hired me to illustrate the bust and the scenes for Into the Motherland. And I got a new job. I got away from a job where I was ready to drop kick my boss because every time I would do something that was going to try and help with diversity in Twitch TM, I would be told things like, oh, enjoy your vacation. And I'm like, I'm literally about to go to San Francisco and yell at people about doing better things with diversity. This is not a fucking vacation. This is literally me. me. This is me working. This is me working. When I do interviews with magazines, which I can say I've done now, talking about why I am or am not hype about things. This is me working. When I go to C2E2 to collaborate and get sponsored by Dryad Tees so that I can have some type of flowers to represent my channel, this is me working. And in all of that, like I said, I did the art for Into the Motherlands. I got sponsored by Blue Microphones. I got sponsored by Astro Gaming. I am trying to get sponsored by Logitech. I know you're here somewhere. You need to sponsor me. And Hell then yeah. on top of all of that, like I said, the new job really helped out with a ton of things. It put me directly in the charity circuit. So now I'm like that angry, over-enthusiastic charity person that I'm like, I'm a violent, I'm a kind of violent enforcer, influencer person. Cause you, you get the people who are like, do your best. You can do it. We believe in you. And you have people like me who are like, where the fuck are your commission rates? Mm -hmm. Where are they? Looking at some of y'all that are in chat cause y'all in the wine cellar and y'all artists and stuff too. Where are your commission rates though? Y'all ain't put them up. I need y'all to go ahead and collect your flowers because that's what I want to facilitate. And I feel like 2020, despite being a bit of a dumpster fire of a year, help push me towards doing more of that. And the panels I've been on have been delightful. And I feel like I've actually left an impact on the charity fundraising space. I even been in conferences. I've done tons of things in 2020 that I never thought I'd be able to say I did in any way, shape or form. I actually can say I've been to a paid conference. Like, what? <laughs> Someone paid me to be at their conference. I don't even know what that means anymore. <laughs> Oh, you'll get used to it. We're gonna talk about your rate for conference speaking too. Ooh. Oh, you, Ooh. yeah. Well, 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 well. I need <laughs> I need to work on rates for like you know sensitivity reading and so I need to work so, on a lot of rates. So we all have a conversation. Is what you're saying? Yeah. Don't yeah. get get your ass up from under that desk. Mm, no, I, <laughs> I sure won't. I mean, okay. So Vanessa, here's here's the thing. <laughs> oh. No, uh, no, 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 no. Hear me out. People that look like you and me want to hear it from someone who looks like you and me so that they get a, at least a second or third opinion feeling like I am not less valuable because I am brown and doing these things. Well. Truth. Hold on, where, shit, all my fans are out of reach. Oh, sorry. <laughs> like if, 
if if I had a dollar, not even if if I had five cents for every time I had to ask someone like if my rates are okay, and then I got rates from someone who looked like me and someone who didn't look like me, and more often than not, the person who didn't look like me was charging a bit lower, mm. and they would have the same amount of experience or more. But it's also about like the people that get the time of day. And if the people that get the time of day don't look like you or me, they're also going to be the ones that charge what's a more reasonable price. And they like it had it has to be said. I like, had it's not, to, yeah, oh, sorry, no, sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, I know I had I reached out to Tanya one day and I was like, I should know, but I'm just curious about this because like I know my rates in the theater world. I know what I deserve in acting in real life because that's what I do. Hashtag equity. But like as far as like you know doing doing like a, a sponsored streams or appearing on a show and all these things, I was like. I should know, but I just don't know. And especially as a black man in the community, as a black person in the community, am I about to undersell myself because I feel like I need to so I can actually get paid or like what? And Tony was like, no, this, (laughs) that right there should be your minimum. (laughs) And I was like, good to know. (laughs) It's funny because the person who actually forced me to get off of my ass back into art, I hit them with the same speech because they were just like, okay, well, I'm going to charge this for emails. And I looked at it and I was like, you're going to do what? Not at that rate. You're not. What are you doing? What do you mean? Well, people won't pay for that. No, I don't have energy for this. You're going to raise your rates now. Mm. People will raise your rates now. I was the same way. What a lot of people don't think about emotes is that not only are you creating an artistic expression for your streamer, but they are then going to turn around and monetize it truth and that's still your time your energy your resources yep. all yeah. those other things and do what's like yeah. well, i'll just do this amount and i was you like but you won't stream are more marketable you are upping their production quality so you deserve to get your money i'm gonna quickly shout out look people in the chat if you don't know him you're gonna be very confused for a second but i'm gonna shout out arsqueef real quick <laughs> because i was like arsqueef uh does all me didn't do this i was very proud to do this overlay today oh my god okay photoshop realness no but uh i uh, all of my emotes well, most of my emotes are him my overlay him um some other stuff him and i'm like i but like i looked at those races and i was like you're right this is totally correct because i know what i'm now about to do with the stuff that you have created so yep. give me that accurate pay and i and if this is what i need this is what i'm going to pay so yeah all y'all artists in y'all in this chat right neons don't be underselling yourself mm-hmm. the hell you uh, need to assign your own value don't allow other people to assign value to you mm. You know yeah. what? I don't think we've had Tanya talk about this. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. No, because I, mean, I, 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 I will throw her under the bus with a quick segue because it was exactly that conversation I to had. To be fair, Tanya. Tanya, you set yourself up for that. You did. Right. I saw the comment last and I was like, yeah, oh, they I already went like, after okay, her. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> You know what? I think it's time for a break. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, well, thank, thank, thankfully, uh, I control the break on this side. So, oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh. I can just oh. get up and walk away. So, the, what's going to happen? Is go, you're going to go. I'm going to go, and then we're going to take a, a bio break. How's that? How's that feel? How's that sound? Fine. Wow. Everybody's <laughs> barking on me. I, even poor DC Lacerre got in. I like. I have Twitter, and I'm like, excuse you. That's what made me go back and look. <laughs> That's the way thanks, DC. Up. Thanks. Like, hmm, what was that about? All hmm. right. So first, let's talk about rates. Now, you know what? I'm gonna just hit y'all with what I charge, and I have no shame in it. When I speak at a convention, and in the before times when we could travel, you covered my flight, hotel, the day before, the day of, the day after minimum. Especially all these West Coast conventions that want me to bring my Midwestern ass out there and get there. Speak at a 10 a.m. convention. And think I'm going to get on a red eye, show up, talk, and then leave the same day. No, that's not what we do. Um, I've charged people anywhere from $500 to $4,000 for a speaking event. I have to, it's time I got to take to write it. I got to look into your company. I got to look into you. I tailor your talk to what you want me to come and talk about. And that is me getting to go talk there. Now for all the virtual shit we've been doing, Minimum five hundred to a thousand dollars because I still got to take time because it's time away from the projects I'm doing, my stream, any meetings I might have, 
for the two to three hours you want me to be on zoom or whatever and that's not just and that's just speaking that's not writing that's not consulting there's a reason this year has been profitable because i haven't been able to travel so i can stay my ass home and write and consult and if and uh actually uh anita sargesian narked on like she yelled at me when i said her my rate she was like what the fuck mm. she was just like um no you're gonna double all these immediately mm. and then like mm. i was doing the same thing like here's my rate is this okay and then companies didn't balk at paying what i thought was an outrageous amount of money and i was like oh okay and now, you know, as much as I hate talking about myself, with all the things that came in in the last couple months of 2020, I can go, oh, you want a gamer of the year to talk at your event? Here's my rate. You want member of the future class to talk at your event? Here's my rate. Because it's still that Midwestern, I feel weird talking about money. But if, fuck it, if y'all gonna like throw me under the bus and, and make me talk about the accolades, here you go. You gonna pay for my time. That's real. Plus, anything that gets on TV, anything that's on a viral video or something like that, you need to slap an as seen on on your website now. I that's actually have been, I actually have been trying to get into that because yes. I need to make a one pager, and I was like, okay, here's yep. me in this magazine. I was, I didn't get it. I knew I wouldn't get it, but I was still chosen as one of the gamer of the years for the Game Her Awards, and I'm gonna put that bad boy everywhere. I was yep. a nominee. Yeah, Fight me absolutely. over it. Absolutely, that's yep. real. Fight me over it. Uh, yeah, that's so, that's, no, like yeah. anyone out there, make sure if you've anything, anything you've done, like anything you've done, keep it Google doc, keep it for your one pager, just write that. I have like now links and names and panels and mm -hmm. casts and interviews. And it's just like, because at some point, someone, at some point, someone's going to make you feel like, why are you asking so much? You look back at that document and say, this is why. Yep. Yep. Oh, no, I've got a, I've got a currently running total because I haven't updated it because we didn't go anywhere last year. <laughs> my speaking history document that i will send someone is about 12 pages long yes including like every panel i do every speaking thing i do my website has a portfolio of here's all the thing i've consulted on you know yep. i can now i don't know if i can say it but a game i worked on is going to be up for a bafta yeah um, so there's all these things that i've been nominated for and it's but it's weird and someone made a comment in the chat and i want to address it really quick before I talk about all the shit I actually did do in 2020, because it was a lot. <laughs> um, they said, capitalists need people feel weird about talking about money. That's not about capitalism. That is my own personal ethos and how I grew up. That was a, you don't talk about how much you make because it's weird. It's uncouth. It's a certain, Brian, I don't know if you had the same thing, because we're closer in age. It, I will, I will actually, I'll lend a little bit to capitalism for that. Like a little bit, because like I, you know, basically... Twitch is like part time for me. I I have a right. nine, five day job, and yeah, it is a it is a thing that it is it, the the whole system we are in pushes everybody down to not value their worth to to not value what they're actually worth. So yeah, but also also it is intensely personal for a lot of us. Yeah. Intensely mm -hmm. personal to be I like know, we don't talk about that. Mm, right. I know in my family you didn't talk about your triumphs and you didn't talk about your struggles. Like that's those aren't things that you do you don't talk yeah. about like how much you make or how much you need and this kind of carries over too to like when you're talking about your salaries when mm -hmm. you're talking about trying to get raises and we could even mm -hmm. keep it even more 100 this is one of the reasons why all these great things were happening i bet you at least two people in this call were afraid to talk about them on the timeline because you were afraid to talk about your successes and everything because it's like well we're doing a pandemic is this gauche? Yeah. Should I do that? Yeah. Should I yeah. let people know? Mm, I don't want people to, I don't want to feel weird because I'm thriving mm -hmm. and someone else is not. Mm, mm, right. Mm. And that, and that's oh, where seriously. I was getting, right. And that's where I was kind of getting to because yeah. the weird thing is with the pandemic, I've actually sat my ass at home and I've had time to do all these projects and opportunities. And it's like, when I can, I was like, oh, somebody's fundraising. Here's more than I could normally ever get. Or one of my friends is in need. Here, let me slip you a little PayPal. Yeah. Normally, I could never do that. For those that don't know, I was raised on public aid. Like we were broke ass people. I, I had the government cheese, the government clam chowder. You know, standing in line and the whole what bill do we pay this month? Do we want lights or do we want cooking gas? That's how I grew up. And so 
class issues, money issues are real deep seated thing. And also that Catholic guilt that my mom instilled in me that I'm still working mm-hmm. through of, well, you, you know, you don't do that. You don't lord over what you got versus what other people got. And it's like, but if I got it and a friend needs it, that's not lording it over them. It's going here. What I got is yours. And, uh, and I'm going to talk about what I've done and then we can, then I can stop. Cause y'all are embarrassing me and I know I'm turning red. Um, so, you know, 2020, the good things, um, obviously into the motherlands, um, you know, and, and as bad as Twitch can be, as bad as Twitch can be, you know, they gave us the money for it to happen because I didn't have that kind of money sitting in my pocket. I'm doing well. I ain't doing that well. Let's not, let's not get it twisted. Um, if but I also pleasantly twisted, sorry. Oh, <laughs> or twisted really? tea or twisted tea. Twisted tea though. Um, <laughs> so i'm still a little tipsy so just tk's, TK's so vibing for me sorry. because i'm like turning colors i feel like my face has that unpleasant glow and i feel it even though if you can't see it that's caught that little comment in the chat blurred girl i see you nope. um <laughs> but you know the motherlands happened and i got to not just work with people i respect i got to fucking pay them because we don't do unpaid labor in this house Rivals got two more seasons over 2020. We know we got a nice season coming up at the end of the month. You know, I got to finally DM, even if they drove me up a wall, I got to DM for a season. Um, You know, what else did I do? I got to work on a lot of projects, some public, some not. And, you know, all the accolades at the end of the year were just like, you know, I knew future class was coming two weeks before we could say anything. But like the Kotaku thing, just literally, I was like, what i did not expect that and you know the thing the main thing that got that was the charity stream where we rate i raised about one hundred and forty thousand dollars in one stream in 10 hours and it feels weird and i feel like i'm bragging but we all did that shit and it was the community and the team overall many of you are on that team we raised three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars over the course of a couple months yeah um and that wasn't just me that was a team effort that was people coming forth and you know and for ill or good the one month where people remembered black folks on twitch exist a lot of us got shine a lot of us got opportunities and the last thing is because of motherlands it was a lucrative month a lucrative three months on twitch and also the channel is over four and a half million views total and i've been on twitch almost seven years so there's a lot all the rest of it's under nda and i can't tell you till who knows when (laughs) so (laughs) No, that's, I mean, it's, it's so damn good. Um, just to see everybody just thrive. Um, and I mean, I'm, I'm happy to say to me, I, I've, I've thankfully done good too. Uh, I mean, not the biggest thing in my life. That sounds, let me rephrase that. Um, I did not come into Twitch to like start making money and doing all these things. I did it because we were in a pandemic and as an actor, as a performer, I needed a way to express myself somehow and then someone was like why don't you stream and i was like okay i guess but that's a lot of effort and that's a lot of money and who got a camcorder and all these things i just didn't know uh well i didn't have at that moment um so i kind of got that together i made it happen look i'm proud this is this is an accomplishment and i and i don't know if there's a record other than like celebrities or anything like that. And it's not even that serious, but I started streaming April 2nd, 2020. I was a Twitch partner, July 18th, 2020. That's less than three months. And yes, a big part of that was the first round table when I got all those numbers and everything. But like, I still feel I I started from nothing and worked my way to where I am now. And, and now that it's January 1st, 2021, I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad that I have put in the work and put in the time. And now this is my full time job uh, because I'm not going out into that world and getting Corona for nobody. I'm not walking into the plane of pandemics for nobody. So I'm going to be here at this computer streaming, being a hot ass mess that I am. And I'm lucky to say that I could actually pay my bills doing that. Um, that feels really good. Uh, I mean, I worked with Critical Role this year. That was a huge thing for me. Something I never thought would happen. Uh, I'm, I am no, I'm known for my vocal ability, and I actually got to do things about my vocal ability. What Tanya can attest to this too. I was thinking about when y'all said um, 
you know, uh, when people ask you to do things, you can be like, well, now I am associated with blank, therefore pay me more. I was like, Wizards contacted both of us to announce Tasha's was a thing. Oh, shit. That was a sheer time. <laughs> <I'm not sure. laughs> Contacted us to say, you will be the one to let the world know that this is happening. So that is, that, that is, not that I can hold that over anybody, but I know my worth. I know who I am as a creative in this community. So when people ask me to do things and play games, I'm like, especially for pay, and I'm not going to get into uh, the, the emails both of us got recently asking us to, 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 to DM for for less than 2200 okay um, hold on i'm gonna tell on everybody because <laughs> i was gonna I'm say but now you don't open the floodgates so right, now you gotta I mean, talk about out it there now let's go ahead and talk about no, it. no i'm gonna tell on everybody because i finished one glass of wine i just poured some nice red so we just gonna tell on everybody so and this is this is not a pleasant note but this is where we talk about our worth Mm-hmm. Me and CB and I don't know who else got hit up. Shall we say the name or should we not? Let's let's not let's not let's not even put the negativity Damn. out there. I, look, I want to, neg- but let's not <laughs> let's not. It's not negative. It's not negative. However, we all know that our positions we we could have them shut down if we really wanted to. Uh, uh, just DM me later. I'll tell yeah, you. Yeah, just DM if you really want to know. DM. Actually, uh, <laughs> if I'm if you have me on Facebook, I told all the shit on Facebook. <laughs> um, a company. He DM'd CB and me and a bunch of people of color asking us to DM or play in a three hour show running 10 weeks for $13 an hour. That's, that's not even minimum wage. That's $36 a day to DM, come up with an entire story, pr- probably somewhat produce. Um, for, 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 that's $360. For ten weeks. I just want to say that uh, <laughs> Target Target pays fifteen dollars. Right. Just so. need to <laughs> the hand. I can't. I can't. Just, <laughs> oh, no, wait, hold on, hold on. Before you have your moment, this was the second time they reached out. The first time was like an eighteen-week thing that was like a hip-hop RPG, and then when I broke down the pay they offered, it was a dollar sixty-seven an hour. That's oh, no. prison wages. <laughs> if yes. they pay you in prison. <laughs> yes, Vanessa. <laughs> I want to talk about this from another perspective, especially as black creatives that are all on here, because I need people, and this is where we're gonna kind of segue, I think, before we go on break. Yeah. I need people to realize too that some of y'all really think you're doing us favors with this mess because oh but it's 13 an hour but think of all the visibility and everything else and it's like but here's the thing just putting me up on the camera and everything that shouldn't be part of my pay you still need to pay me before i get over here you're not gonna hand me this lump deal where it's like well here's this piddly wage but also you're gonna be on this other space and everything it's like but that's a given and let's not forget it's they, my they, job they, to be on camera <laughs> but let's not forget they also threw in on a partner channel like most of us aren't all partners or work with a partner channel that has real numbers and the not way the piddly shit you have and reaching out like that it's like we are the ones who are actually doing you the favor appearing on your show because like, like, that's the you, thing we we because are the draw you're you you are not because they look at it as oh but we're helping you out look at us being intersectional dog do you want to have that talk you sure you want that smoke because i can issue it it's not a problem and tanya been in dms with me she knows the smoke orders have been issued elsewhere for other things it's like no i'm just gonna roll out my own metrics and go beat that Mm. Mm. like that's like the metrics from other lands would you like Mm -hmm. the the half a million views that we got on Sundays. Can you beat that? And I know, I, I know some some ignorant, um, um, uh, pressed panini pressed, uh, St. Louis bread company pressed, um, uh, person <laughs> in the chat is going to be mad that we are giving out all of our 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 metrics and our and our what we've done. But that's just the bottom line. Like you can't ask me to do something 
for scraps like please sir can i have some more when you you asked me and us for a reason because you know what we can say, bring but to you the asked channel me specifically for a reason you didn't <laughs> ask me because you thought i was struggling you asked me because i have numbers because i have like a reputation because i have reach i have millions of reach on my twitter every month every single month you came over because you wanted my numbers my face and you wanted my reach and you actually had the raw audacity to offer me this piddly amount and then think I was going to be like, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. This is going to help. So, girl, if you don't get off my mentions with this garbage. And I'm going to say one more quick thing. The while we raw give audacity. Up, the raw audacity. Um, and just because it's on my head. Uh, and again, I'm not going to call these people out by name because that uh, that's mm -hmm. going to be punching down in some way, shape, or form. And I'm not going to do that. It is, on, but some on, days, you know what? Some days, some days, <laughs> some days, I really want to beat your fucking ass right now. Um, but um, no, not only the first time, not only would you reach out to a a creator with the abysmal change, barely even that, giving me soul coins, it's not worth anything on the fucking material plane. What you did was reach out to a black person for a hip hop RPG just because I'm black, but you didn't give any information about said hip hop RPG, but you thought the fact that I was black and saw the word hip hop, I would be interested. And then offered me abysmal coins. Like, <laughs> like look, in, in 2021, oh. y'all about to come correct towards people of color <laughs> asking us to do shit. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> how many, how many not, abysmal uh, coins go into a copper coin? Too, not enough. <laughs> I was about to say, hang on, I'm gonna give you some coins. It's like, sir, these are this is jewelry. This isn't even this isn't even currency. Mm. I can't I can't use this, but thank you. Oh, but let's not forget the the piece of resistance of the first part of the first contact, which was Oh, we know your time is worth more. We'll pay you more. But it's like, well, what about these other people that you are now contacting and trying to raise your profile off our backs? I'm not worth more than CB or Vanessa or Brian or TK or Gabe. You ain't going to pay me more and then try to have us out here being black on black crime of not getting paid enough. Someone saying, y'all take Electra. <laughs> not with the play. <laughs> no. They're going to they be coming in with bargains, being like, how about I give you 15 an hour and a pizza? Dog, how about what? I give you a honey bun? <laughs> I want exactly three. I want three. No, that's not how that works. Baby, the way you would other people. What the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give you, okay, how about this? $14 and I'll cover your bean boozled beans for your next charity stream. Oh Lord! Please. You can have these I'll... for free, uh, <laughs> and, and oh you can God. have the refill that I don't want to use. Like, oh. uh, anywho, anywho, before we keep going way too far, uh, we're gonna take this time now to take a quick break because, <laughs> as you can see, we can just start rambling over the bullshit that we go through. But when we come back, I, I, I we're gonna focus. Well, at least I'm gonna hope that we focus on what we want to. And I hate. I I don't care for the idea of new year's resolutions because i feel like it's performative in some way shape or form um you say it just to say it you don't act actively try to do it however i want to talk about what we want to manifest not just as black creators but as creators um in 2021 what we hope this year what we're going to have faith haha um that this year is going to bring for us um so everybody in chat get up stretch go bio uh eat a honey bun like i'm about to do we are at six thousand one hundred forty nine dollars and sixty nine cents nice uh let's see if we can keep uh, going past that as well there is a command f u uh, pay me in chat if you want to support any of the creators here um go follow tk uh because i fucking said so um she's not in the command for reasons but um support everybody here support our joy as christina ariel said support our joy in the best way you can and that's just being there i love you all we're gonna take a break uh and we'll be back deuces <laughs>
And hello, everyone. Welcome back. Thank you all so, so much for sticking around. Hopefully you all got up and stretched and did everything you needed to do in that break time. Thank you all so much for being here and supporting these uh, five uh, creators and me. Um, um, just living our best, living our best life um, as we do. Um, again, we are at 1000 I'm sorry, no, we're not. $6,169.69. Double nice. Thank you so much. Let's see if we can get to $7,500. Um, and as well, you already know how I feel about the world, um, especially after the conversation we just had. F you pay us. If you would like to support us more, more directly, there are links to uh, doing that for everybody, uh, for most of us. Um, Again, go follow TK on Twitter and everything that they do. Um, anywho, uh, we're going to talk about uh, or just chat about 2021 because this is the time for us to have um, affirmations and, and, and talk about what we are interested in seeing, whether personally seeing for the community at large, um, for the world, not even just as a black person or whatever you identify as your, 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 your own personal uh, creeds and things. Um, what are you interested in seeing happen in this next year? I want to see creators being supported year round, year round, not just February. I see you waiting until next month to give us our flowers. Give it to us now. Give it to us all year. Don't wait until one of us is face flat dead in the street somewhere to decide, oh yeah, we should give them flowers. Thank you. And then I'll also- Flowers now, not at my funeral. Mm -hmm. Correct. And kind of the same thing I was saying before, cause I was gonna talk about it, but it's already been talked about. When you are helping out your fellow marginalized creators and everything, it is not a favor. If you look at it as a favor to us, you are doing it wrong wrong treat us like you would other creators and then focus on your things like your dei and whatnot but please do not think you're doing us a favor and then offer us piddly fees and everything else and be like i don't know why you're upset i thought you said dui and i was like what <laughs> i had a moment i know like, we've been drinking every... cb but damn <laughs> i guess i'm just gonna leave that at that <laughs> Also, all I had Vanessa, coffee and Vanessa water. read them for felt and was like, like focus oh, on yourself. In. Focus in. on your DUIs. <laughs> I mean, some <laughs> people might life. need to. You know what? You probably right. Right. Um, what what I want, and, and this is goals for everybody on this call, but everybody that we know that is doing the work. I want us to be able to do things and not have it be a uh, someone so black developer person of color, queer, just bring me on to talk about the shit I do, not just because I'm black. I shouldn't have to, we shouldn't have to be on Twitter to my, here's my project, please look at me or have, you know, and as much as like, you know, at least in me and CB's case, as much as we love our friends at, at Critical Role and other places, the boosts we get from them should also be coming from other places. We shouldn't have to rely on boosts from our white friends and peers to get our work really seen. True. And also I'm gonna be that person because Vanessa knows I'm always that person. We need to also get away from the skin folk who aren't kin folk because the minute they show their ass, you go sit in a corner and be mad that nobody's handed you shit. I'm gonna go be doing my work. <coughs> Gothic. What? Oh, what? I was gonna oh, say what? somebody oh, else. Okay, yeah, no, everybody's got a name. I know everybody here has a name. <laughs> Y'all got a name. I can okay. in this dissertation. Listen, I, I was will. gonna say, I have several. And on that kind like, of same tangent, y'all gonna, to <laughs> gonna stop doing this thing where you only want to support us if you consider us a friend. Mm. We are all out here trying to get the shit done and doing this little thing that y'all do on the slide that you think that none of us notice when we all very loudly do, where you decide you're only gonna support conditionally. Now we see you. We might not even say anything, but trust, you've been noted. It's kind of like death note, but for petty. It's petty note, that's what it is. <gasps> Oh, it's we need to note. okay. Kickstarter that's bonus. New, that's the new name for this Kickst notebook right there. That's the Kickstarter new name bonus. Mm -hmm. Petty note. We need to find the right font for it. <laughs> it's um, but, but you know, it's just the thing where it's like you know, and, you know, and and we've all had these conversations that are not for public knowledge, at least not right now, because I haven't had enough wine. Um, when we have our other friends and we only boost their stuff, 
or the people that don't boost our work because we're getting the shine, we're getting whatever, and because they're not there yet for whatever reason, then they're going to be over on the side making it about them. Oh, it'd be nice if I got some shine. It'd be nice if my project got featured in Nerdist, Kotaku, what have you. Listen, not I just want I... Kotaku to ask me to use my tweets because they're going to stop embarrassing me. <laughs> Look, let me finish so I can stop talking. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. See, now you made me just lose my train of thought. Uh, but you know, the thing where we where we don't support people if we don't like them, and granted, if you got beef with somebody, that's fine. I ain't gonna tell you, be nice to somebody you hate. Mm -hmm. But if we all struggling, and I see you, and it's like, all right, here's this begrudging tweet, but you know what, they hustling too. Fuck it, I'm gonna give you that tweet. That's the least I can do. But when you wanna sit here and not, not just not support other black and POC folks, it's the... I'm going to subtly shade you because, oh, look at you. Look at you. You think you're important. And I'm not getting any recognition. Well, maybe you don't get recognition because you don't do any fucking work. But that's just me. Thank you. I mean, I could go on and I could name names. And maybe after the stream, I will if you DM me. Because I am I am full of salt and vim and vinegar. That's that's mm. the bonus Patreon content. right? Nah. I, I do have a Patreon. So when it They're is the first like... of the month. <laughs> in this in this essay i will name names for um, a whole lot of fucking money i see i see everyone is 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 preaching the gospel of vanessa in chat go work on your content i love it content. i love it we did content. we not have a a panel discussion about that had a whole conversation mm. about it let me go oh, find that link while y'all are talking gonna say that's yeah that's, <laughs> that's something else that happened in 2020 that neither of y'all mentioned oh yeah because Look, it's, been a, long, it's been, been a long ass year <laughs> It's been a long ass year. Um, no, I definitely feel that because every single time I, I know there was one very specific, there was one very specific incident where, um, you know, somebody was offering basically hit me up, hit me up if you're a Twitch streamer and I'll do something for you. And all of us threw our names in and someone was like, you, you already got like, you're already up there. You don't need this. Mm. And, and it was, it was mm. just a, like, people are however you consider them they are up there because they are working very hard so what are you doing nothing except being mad like not just mad but mad <laughs> loud and wrong and has destroyed their own chances of working with people because all these right. cms content managers the people in the industry that follow us they saw you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You be careful because they'll hop up in tweets and tell you about how you ruined yourself. Pretty much, they will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll you'll have a DM waiting, and then you're gonna be real paranoid about the next one you get after that. <laughs> you're you like, got that attention got you ordered. <laughs> look and look, we ain't heard from that dude since. Mm. No, I I I think something that um I have I if it's my resolution, it's not really, but something I want to personally strive for. Um, because even growing up, I dealt with this, and now I'm like, I know it's not even that serious, but I still want to just be remembered to be unapologetically me. Um, going into 2021, I always have been, and I always will be. Don't get it twisted. Uh, but sometimes I look at like, uh, oh yeah, <clears throat> uh, something. Sometimes I look at um the 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 world and i'm looking at twitter and looking at everything and i'm like you know you start doing the second guessing like what's happening why am i you know you're putting in work but you're not really seeing the 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 fruits of that labor things of that nature and then you start going into the oh is this something i'm doing wrong is it is it the way i'm presenting my work is it the way i just am and i have to uh remember that uh, fuck that uh, I know who I am and I know I get hired because of who I am and people might think this but this isn't an act this has never been an act Omega Deontay Jones from St. Louis Missouri is a hot ass fucking mess uh, and I always have been uh, and not that I always will be but just know that like my 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 attitude and my personality and just the way I carry myself whether it's online it's the same way I do it in person it's people who's on me see 2 e too you know I am <laughs> and you're um, and, and and you're tall and I'm tall right <laughs> uh no it was kind of funny towering over you and, and Lauren and chat <laughs> ain't even literally <laughs> But uh, no, it's just I I have I I have to remember that I don't have to change 
anything about myself. And if you hire me, I'm not going to, you're hiring me because you know who I am, not because I'm toning it down to fit your company. You're hiring me because you want my mm. energy. So mm. I'm going to give you all of my energy. Right. That makes sense. Like that's just who I am. And that's, that, that's it. And that's something I just want to remind myself on a constant, on a daily um, I'm pretty, you know, uh, confident in, in my, in my, in myself and who I am, but sometimes it's even, okay, it's okay to have those reminders, even when you're confident, because sometimes, you know, we all have those moments of feeling not as, so that's where I'm at. Mm. Honestly. Mm. How mm -hmm. you feeling, Gabe? I, I'm, yeah, Gabe. Well, I feel good. I think, I think that we, uh, just to decide like tabletop as a whole need to be reminded especially for minorities there's enough to go around it just doesn't get shared to go around that's the problem like it's it's why indie tabletop designers can thrive and survive because there is money in it it's just it's not being shared because it's not it's it's like it's like that whole distrib like distribution of wealth thing or like distribution of attention or like highlighting other people like if we do that and it's more regular it doesn't have to be like other people like it doesn't have to be the same people giving the opportunities mm -hmm. if if i get something and i can't do it i could reach out to anyone on this panel being like hey can you do this thing and if they can't do it they could reach out to someone else and like me being busy and like happily so can be a good thing for somebody else if I redistribute those opportunities in that wealth. And there have been plenty of people that have done that for me and it's made one hell of a difference. And it's okay for me to be like, hey, I don't have time for this. Can I suggest this person? Because there's mm -hmm. so much, like if we're just talking money and finances, there's so much money in this industry. There's so much, especially for indie games and tabletop designers and all that stuff. And it's just, it's just not given. And those people don't get money. So they, they're not hiring people because people need to be hired for their worth, especially with its artists and artists aren't getting hired because they're not able to charge their worth, or at least they're not being appreciated for their worth by other people. And it's a, it's a stupid cycle. That's literally just if we just did better and communicated that better and shared it better, a lot of people would have to struggle to survive less and would be able to live and there'd be a whole lot more flourishing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's just me. I, yeah. And I, I think, you know, essentially like that's, that's something I realized this past year and I want to go, I want to go into this year with that is like, you know, like Dasbeth said in the chat, I say a rising tide lifts all ships, but to, to destigmatize the idea that you have to hoard all of these opportunities, even if you are unable to do any of them, but that you can't, like people are, are they feel afraid to let that slip out because it's like, no, all, all you're doing is just, you're spreading these opportunities around and like, it's, it's the same as not talking about the opportunities. Like when we were talking about rates earlier, like I sat there silently, like, I guess I'm doing this right. I guess I'm asking the right. And I was like, no, let me ask, let me ask Tanya who quickly corrected my ship. And I was like, oh, okay. But the fact is no one like, and admittedly, I'm not saying publicly put that out there on the timeline, but like have people to talk about and make sure that these conversations are, are vocal among your community, among your peers because, because yeah, like that information is the kind of thing that just needs to be out there for everyone. That's yeah. Real. Cause I, yeah, I was, cause you know, as long I want to make sure TK talks to you, but it was just, I don't know if Vanessa saw the look I was giving her during the, Oh, well you can't be black. You can't, you can be black, but not too black and not yourself. I'm like, Oh, we had those conversations before. Mm. Yep. Oh, whole conversations, whole jobs, whole gigs, everything, where they want to bring you on because of what you represent, the energy you bring and the ways that you speak. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden, once they hand you the job and it's like, well, but can you dial that back some? Then what did you come for me for? You knew what you were bringing on board. You knew what you were following. Y'all follow my Twitter. You sub to my channel. You've been all of these places. You know what you are signing up for. There is mm -hmm. nothing that I do on my channel that I don't do all of my spaces and in real life. I've been told very, very frequently, whenever people meet me from Twitch, it is a one-to-one. -one. 
There's not a persona that drops. There's not some type of other thing. So why would you approach me and then actually ask me that clownish ass question? Mm, well, TK. Hello. Actually, on the uh, on the topic of black but not too black, I've started to take more of a mentorship po position as opposed to 2021 is going to be me sort of um, coming out of a more creator and streamer position and into more of producer and mentorship positions for a lot of things. Like, obviously, I'll still be streaming for like indoor recess and things like that, but I'd like to be in positions to to provide those opportunities for more people in our community and part of that is because i am a palatable light-skinned biracial person and that means that i get a lot more opportunities i get a lot more speaking uh chances and things like that and sometimes i get a lot more writing opportunities than other people because i am perceived to be um more approachable or less intimidating and that is the selling point beyond my actual um I'm so sorry that is the that is typically the selling point beyond my actual like expertise or what I can bring to the table uh, I would like to remove that um and work on my own projects and thus mentor more people in the community into face roles uh, that I typically get. Because for one thing, um, we've mentioned before, I don't have a coffee or anything like that. That is because my husband and I both have very um, stable, not super high paying, but, but comfortable jobs. Um, that is something that I think for me would be irresponsible to have for me personally would be irresponsible for me to have a coffee when that is not income that I necessarily need I would rather I would rather funnel people towards people that could actually use it for for which a coffee makes a difference you know what I mean um so 2021 is going to be the year that I move more towards producer and mentorship positions and remove the um the black but not too black Halle berry <laughs> that uh that i've accumulated so yeah i mean i've said that plenty of times where i'm brand safe because i'm light until they hear me talk yeah mm. and then it's like oh i'm sorry have you not followed my twitter have you not been in my streams because sure. i would hope that the people on this panel and those that i know in chat know that the person you're getting on stream the person you see on twitter that's me mm -hmm. uh, there's no fake cipher of tear you gonna get Tanya, and you may get her on a good day or a bad day, whichever one. Draw, take your, you know, your straw that you you pulled. Yeah. But, but I know for a fact a lot of stuff I've gotten to do is because I'm light skinned, and people have this weird idea, and, and maybe we can talk about this. Mm -hmm. This whole they build a version of you that does not exist, and you are the palatable, safe Negro until you open your mouth and prove them wrong. Right. Correct. Mm. And I know as well, being biracial with a white parent and a, and a mostly white upbringing that I do represent a, a certain degree of white privilege as well in our community. And 2021 is going to be the year that I utilize it to put people in more um, advantageous positions. And something kind of along the same lines, but a little trapped and screwed, if you will. Um, I know that a lot of people are more interested, not more interested, or more likely to come to me or Gabe or Brian as black men versus the black women or black non-binary binary folk or folk, fuck the binary, obviously, but like they're more likely to be more interested in going towards the black masculine person because they know the black woman is radical and angry and they're scared of that idea. So we're the palatable black person they can go to. And something I want to personally make sure I strive to do in 2021 is yes, uplifting all black folk uh, in general. But like, I want to make sure that my black fins and my black women and the, my black, anyone who's not in the category that I am, I want to make sure I'm uplifting them too. Yeah. Because we're not about to let them be the ones that everybody yell at. 
when they ask simple questions about certain things. And then if I was asked that same exact question, y'all wouldn't even, you know, bat an eye at it. Mm -hmm. But it's because, you know, I happen to be more of what society wants. Because we already know how the world is. I just want to make sure that I'm making sure I'm also putting my energy towards uplifting those who aren't necessarily like me. Still black, but me, everybody, but still black. But I Mm want to make sure that I'm uplifting everyone else as well. Absolutely. There's definitely like a, a level of intersectionality that people have found where they can, they're like, how can I monetize this without actually being inclusive? And I definitely fall in the crossroads of a lot of those. I am biracial, black light. I am a gender femme light, quote unquote. I am, uh, I am mentally ill, disabled light. Like, you know, I am pansexual, gay light. Like that is a very like gay, but not too gay, black, but not too black, femme-ish, but not a woman. Like, it's very like, and I want to remove myself from, I am now in the point where I am a, I am a barrier to people in my community growing. And I would rather help them by getting out of the way. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Well, I definitely understand it, but I mean, but still you are who you are and I want to make sure people oh, sure. um, recognize that, that just because you are a, 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 for lack of a better word, you, and I want to use half because that's just so fucked up to say, but it's like, yeah. just because you're, you're <laughs> the one that people are more willing to look at doesn't make you not who you are. You still a, right. you still a, a black person. Are you still a, a, a your agender? You're your who you are, and I want to make sure the world understands exactly what inclusivity and and diversity mm-hmm. is. Not just when they want to put their own urban dictionary oh, definition on for it. sure. And I would not. That's the reason why 2021 is that year as opposed to 2020. 2020 was the year I get my name in a bunch of hardbacks. I did that. Now I have that foundation to actually help other people in my community. Um, I have credibility behind my name so that people I recommend actually, like there's something behind it, I guess. That's real, that's real. Um, It doesn't make me feel less black. It doesn't make me feel less a gender or anything like that. But uh, I, I recognize that I now have all this power and I no longer need this visibility. This visibility needs to go to um, people in my community that can do so much more than me. Well, not, not, not as patronizing as like a next generation, but I think part of what comes with being a mentor and a, and a person in the community who helps, uh, I see this like Nia, I'm a Nia stan. So it's very much like Nia purpose and things like that. My purpose was to create a platform for which I could advocate for other people. And that is what I'm going to be doing from here on out. I'm with that. Something else I personally just want to do. And if y'all have differing opinions, that's okay. It is okay. That's what makes our society great. Uh, And, and, you know, contrary to what other Anglo-Saxons like to say. Um, But I want to get rid. I don't want to get rid of the wrong word. I am a black person. You do not have to default, de- default and call me a person of color. It's okay to use the word black. It's okay to use the word black. I will say one more time. It's okay to use the word black. Now, I know other people have different um, feelings when it comes to the term person of color. Uh, and I definitely still use it. But I feel like people use that as a the, the safest way to get by. Or they use that to not say what it is like and i don't know guess for me it's like you I, i'm not about to condemn somebody for calling me a person of color but like it's okay to say hey yeah you're a black person because it's it's th- there's power in that you know and i don't know how y'all feel but that's just me <laughs> that's me i had a whole little twitter conversation about it i don't need to go too deep into it now but it's just that's just something i guess want to personally is try to make sure people i remind people as far as i am concerned Isn't it right? <laughs> like, like am, I, I, am I talking? All right. No, I mean, I grew up like I grew up through. Goodness gracious, I grew up through. You know, first black, then Afro American, then African American, and we're just like, just say black, just just say black. I don't it's know fine. how we got to this point where people are like, well, we're not sure if that's the correct terminology. It's like, but that's, but that's what we are. Is we're black. Well, wouldn't you prefer African-American? I just want you to refer to me as something correct. 
honestly. honestly. African American, black, POC, whatever the fuck. But as long as you're calling me the correct thing and you're doing it with purpose, I don't care. And I mentioned that in CB's thread. The biggest issue with POC specifically is how many people, when they say POC, they mean black. And so you have kind of the double whammy of A, you just kind of washed away any other type of people of color. Like we are not the only POC, Mm -hmm. but then B, you kind of use it as this safety net to be like, oh, but look at me, I'm inclusive, but we're not talking about POC issues. We're talking about black issues. When you refer this podcast and everything to your friends, it says new year, still black, not new year, still POC. We're black, Mm -hmm. black. I'm gonna oh, say yeah, I'm gonna say one quick thing, and I won't talk again. Why y'all talk about this real quick? I think a main issue, and this is like me being a grammar asshole, and I, I'll, I'll accept it. The main issue I have with POC is that people use it as an adjective, and it's not. <laughs> POC stands for person of color or people of color. Well, so when people say mm-hmm. I'm a POC creator, so you're a person of color creator creator. Please make it make sense. Right. <laughs> like, this, Please. This, like, like when the- people say ATM machine. Listen, listen to what you're saying. So I've actually, I had another thread on this. If you want to call me a creator, a, 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 a POC creator, call me a creator of color. If you want to call me a POC actor, call me an actor of color. <laughs> but POC is not an adjective. And that's so many people use it as such because they think, as you just said, they're not trying to say POC. They're trying to say black. Or if they're referring to a black. black person, it's like, no, just say what they are. <laughs> but just sorry, go ahead, Brian. Sorry. That's all I have no, to say. No, it's, it's, it's fine. It's just, it's just the catch all the catch all nature of it as well. Like, you know, like you say, Oh, POC issues. And it's like, Oh, okay. Mm. Do, do you mean, do you mean black or do, do you mean, you know, do you mean Asian South Asian? Do you mean like, cause what we do don't you all mean, have the same issues. That? Right. Like, and it I became black, the, but not political. Oh, well, oh, well, oh, it's, hold up. let me get a. Okay. So if we go in there, but it, it's just like, it's just so, like it is so non-fucking specific that it hurts and the the idea that you needed to have again it goes back to like you need a politically correct phrase but now you've picked one that is like worse than just than just saying what you thought was offensive which actually we're like no say if you mean black say black if you mean asian so like say what you mean but by trying to do this weird lumping thing you are you're you're being non-specific and leaving people out and i'm like no it's so, so like, it's so funny how people love to say I don't like labels, but yet slap a big ass fat one on there because you think that's the right thing to do when you're wrong. <laughs> well, and dimples and dimples said it in chat too. It's the avoidance for me. It, it's the active energy and effort of avoiding just saying black, just saying indigenous just saying Asian, because then you can sit there and hide behind. Oh well, I didn't want to get anything incorrect. I mean, you could just ask me. I could tell you I'm black. That's see, that's that's difficult. It's not, I don't feel like people can just ask because sometimes <laughs> just asking is very rude. That's true. That's very very true. So it's one of those things where it's like the education on how to go about it that's still on them, but it's completely valid if you want to just get the answer. And to kind of allude to what you're saying too, Gabe, when you get that answer, you are not owed politeness. Sometimes. You're going to ask somebody and they may get an attitude with you. They get asked that probably more often than they want to hear. But at the same time, this thing where you just kind of lump us all together as this kind of just not white amalgamation of stuff. It's not helpful. Like, just say black. Just say Asian. I, I, I I also want to say, though, I, I the issue why I say I don't have an issue with the word or the, the idea, the phrase or whatever you want to call this thing, because the world doesn't even know what POC means. Um, the issue I have with it is it's not that you just don't want to call me black. It's that you say person of color, but then just leave it there. You, it's, it's your if someone said it's your safety net and that's fine to have a safety net. But when you're talking about a specific thing. It's okay to go past that safety net. It's okay to take up some 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 shears and cut through that safety net. I mean, if I'm talking about like myself and 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 Jasmine and, and and Lisa and all these other people, then sure, yeah, obviously we're all people of color. But it's like if 
like using this using this group right here. We're all black. So calling us POC isn't wrong, but it's also okay to say black. That's why I get at. You know? Mm. I don't get yeah. I, I love that Gabe has has Ooh. opinions. I want to hear him. I want to hear it. A lot of Africans don't necessarily say black because black is American. But uh, but see, and I agree with that as well. I agree with that as well. I and I I should be more specific as an African American. I know there's a whole thing that goes into being African versus yeah. African American. Because like there's there is in like I know I have a friend who is from Jamaica who it wants to be Jamaican, not just black, because he doesn't mm -hmm. have what is a black experience. So there's there's a lot of time where like I I. I think people of color for myself is good because this is the probably the first stance that white people are considered a minority. And that is a whole different experience. It like when you lump people that are not white into a group, then white is the minority in that circumstance. But every other time we've been considered the minority up to that point. So it's, it's, and, and like also I have a lot of black in me my grandmother was a native cherokee so there's also native american in me so it it's not always just black of course that's that's often why i say i'm a person of color because there is um there is a, a like couldn't do it this year obviously but there's a native power that happens in my town literally every year and i go every year with my mom and dad and we all go and just enjoy like the native side that we have in our family. My mom mm. has a lot of Cherokee. My dad has Iroquois and we've spent more time like actively delving into it. So oftentimes I'll say POC, unless I'm specifically speaking on my own black experience because they can be very different. Agreed. Uh, I want, I, I keep saying, I want to quickly say something, say something, but because you said that I want, I want to comment on this. The reason I, as an African American um, default to black and I think a lot of people who don't necessarily have different cultures or different ethnicities within them um, that they know of, uh, and that's more than a slave owner, um, um, a lot of people use black because it's, it's the idea. It, so many conversations have been based on why can I say white pride, but you can say black pride. You can't say white pride because you're not actually saying white pride. You're saying Italian pride or you're saying you're uh, Scandinavian pride or or Greek pride or all these other things. Whereas me as a black American, I don't have the ability to know what I actually was when I came from Africa. Because guess what? I didn't just come from Africa. My family was forced over here because what? Slavery. Um, so we had to create a new culture. African American is a culture within itself, is an ethnicity within itself, because that's all we had. And we would have to go through years and years of scientific evidence to figure out exactly what we were before we were dragged over from that continent. So to say black, it for African Americans is specifically saying black is a matter of pride because it's what we've had. It's what we know. It's what we are, you know? So of course saying person of color, it's, there's nothing wrong with that. Cause they're, like you said, you have native and you, a, a lot of black African-American folk have other uh, ethnicities in them. And they know for a fact they have them. And so you can be proud of both of those things, but there's a lot of black African-American folk who don't, they know. I didn't know I was from my family was from Cameroon and, and Congo and all these things until I did uh, ancestry DNA. And the fact that I had to go take a, a I had to pay sixty nine ninety nine Thank you coupon um, to figure out my, my heritage says so much. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but there's also that part too where you'll you'll get people it's like well and and this is for me and i don't know if other people feel this way i always had an issue with the term african-american because it could be the work that i used to do it could be other things where i'm like african hyphen american to me was always you are an americanized african not mm. i can trace my ancestry back somewhere in in the motherland because africa is a whole last continent and I'm light as fuck. I don't know where these people came from. I We got some West Indies and some Creole, some Cajun. That's all I know. I don't know for sure where the fuck we came from. So I could say that I have African heritage, some infinitesimal percent, but I never felt comfortable with African American because I didn't come here from Africa and become a naturalized American citizen. I feel like that was something put on us for people to be comfortable and not get away from the political incorrectness of saying Negro but they didn't want to actually call us black. Just call me black. 
I know that I'm yellow as fuck. I'm black. I'm not mixed at all. Me and TK are the same fucking color. Misty, our friend Misty, Imperial, mixed. Same color as me and TK. Frisk, mixed. Same color as me and TK. But yet, we'll also get the, well, are you really black? Because people have this idea that you got to be the complexion of like CB and Vanessa and Brian and Gabe to really be black. And there's this weird, I'm trying to make you the exception to the rule. So if you're not really black in my mind, you're okay. I think there needs to be an appreciation made about everyone here from a color standpoint, being so drastically different and everything to point out how this goes back. And this is something that kind of ties back to what we we're talking about before. What we'd love to see in 2021 to the idea that black people are not a monolith. I say black, I say black. I'm not gonna be bothered by POC or African-American. And I think Tanya, Gabe and CB all have extremely valid points. I also think that's why it's imperative that we have people like this in a collective unit on these panels and these interviews and all that stuff because none of this nuance or conversation or any of these important details would ever be brought around without us here. Because every single thing that was said just now was super valid. And like I said, I go with black. You can call me black. If you call me African-American, I automatically kind of start looking at you a kind of way, but for what it's worth, I notice that that's the case too with people who are not black specifically, because then I have to go back into my mindset and say, oh, well, are you just avoiding calling me black? Is this something somebody told you? What is the reason why we did this? And then usually I can go through some tweets and I can piece that together myself. Cause it's like, oh, you're doing the lumping thing. Oh, you've somehow been conditioned to think that African-American is way incorrect and, and you know, whatever other reason. And then I still don't know how we got to the point where black is unacceptable. It's like, that's, that's not true though. So I did just want to add that little caveat because this is why we need to all be in the spaces because having your panel that says New Year's still black and there's five white people and one of us, you're not gonna get anywhere with that. You're not, go you're not gonna get anywhere. You're gonna take what, and I'm just gonna like, just call it. You're gonna take what CB said and then you're gonna say, okay, so that's gonna be the standard. And then Gabe and Tanya are gonna be like, but it's not. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna do it again. And you're gonna take Gabe and you say, okay, that's the new standard. And then CB and Tanya are gonna be like, but it's not. And then you're going to do it again with Tanya and then Gabe and CB. And it's this cycle. And it's like, why don't you just put us all in the same fucking room together for once? And then you'll see that it's more to it than just mm -hmm. this is right. This is wrong. Well, something also gets, I, I typed it out because I was having a, a, a private conversation as well. Um, it's, it's interesting that we focus on, I mean, when we think about the word binary, other than like, you know, the binary code and other stuff, when we think about binary, we immediately go to the gender binary because we all know fuck the binary. It's not just male and woman. It's not male and female. It's everything in between. And it's also nothing. Um, so we know that, but there's also so much more. Like you think about like racial makeups and all this stuff. It's like, I'm not just black. Obviously there is, I'm, I, I, there's Cameroon and I, there's some, um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Congo and, and, and Mali and, and uh, Benin Togo and all these things that make up who I am. So it's honestly all a case by case basis. However you feel as a person of color, uh, however you feel and what you want people to refer to you as and how you, you go about your life is okay. Even if it differs from someone else's opinion, because guess what? we are all human and we all have different lives and different stories and different backstories and everything. So it's, it's a whole thing. It's like, no one's ever going to be right ever because guess what? That's not how this word was. That's not, that, that's not how this world. And as we, as a society was created, we were never meant to be right. We were just meant to exist and how we navigate through life as we exist. So yeah, with me, yeah, I like to be called black, but there are so many other people who don't necessarily do that. That's why I said for me as a personal affirmation for 2021, for me, you can refer to me as what I would like, but don't take what I want to be referred to as what you should be saying to Tanya, to Gabe, to, T, to TK, to Brian, to, to, to everybody, to Vanessa. It's just what I personally wanted. Cause it's the same way you go about anything else. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
But uh, be- before I know some of us need to head out. Um, um, so we're not ending, but I know some people need to head out. What I would like to do really quickly, uh, and I'm calling you out, Gabe. You gonna go first? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Love you. What I do want to do, though, because you know how we talk about holding each other accountable, especially as like, you know, black people say we want to or pe- we want to see each other shine. We want to see each other go forth and 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 prosper. Um, I, I'm going to do y'all dirty. I want you to say one tangible goal that you have in 2021 and I'm going to hold your ass to it and I'm going to see it happen. Because guess what? This is not only going to be on my channel for a while. The VOD is getting ripped, uh, getting uh, uh, downloaded, and it's going to be uh, permanently uploaded somewhere. So you can't say you never said you wasn't going to do it because you said it right here. Cool. So All I right. want y'all to tell me a tangible goal of 2021. I'm going to have an East Coast tabletop studio rented out for filming in-house games. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Hell yeah. Bet. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Like, I can't follow. No, I, I, was like, well, no, no, I, I got no, one. No, I got no, one. No. Okay, go ahead. Then I'm going next. <laughs> Say, I'm going to get my podcast I want to get running, Work in Progress, which is going to be focused on gaming spaces and the things they need to work on and actually have guests that are from those communities who need to be talking about it. I'm going to get that podcast up and running. Uh, I'm just going to put it in the ether. Motherland's book is going to be out and we're going to we coming for Critical Role. Ooh. Hi, Brian. How are you? Hi, Brian. I know he's in the chat, Brian Foster. Hell um, yeah. But no, you know what? No, no. But you know what? And I say this because, you know, Rivals of Waterdeep is, will be in its ninth season in a few weeks. And I'm sick unto death with the people only talking about Rivals in, I like D&D and I like Critical Role, but I want one with Black people. That's not all we're there for. We are all good players. We are all good people. We all do amazing things. But you can talk about us beyond the diversity conversation. Because guess what? Black people have been playing D&D since before you realized we exist in June of 2020. Black folks been making games because, oh, I don't know, Mike Pondsmith made Cyberpunk way back when. So y'all going to stop talking about rivals and all the things that we do in terms of just diversity. You going to come get this real good fucking game. That's real. Mm-hmm. Who following suit? I still got to think of mine. So that's why I'm calling y'all first. dropped amazingly huge bombs. Right. And, uh, okay. I want my podcast. I, um... I want my podcast. I want my podcast. <laughs> I wanted it last year and I couldn't because I got inundated and didn't know how to schedule. I want my podcast. I, for me, um, Twitch is still a part-time thing for me. I still have like a day job. So one of the things I want to do is I want to find a better balance between being able to do content creation that doesn't exhaust me from having like an eight hour a day commitment that I can't work on any of this stuff. But in terms of my content creation online, I, I want to do more i want to do more beyond playing video games um i have had a few streams where i've had people on and we've talked about their projects and i've kind of like i would love to do i would love to do more talk more interviews um and um and yeah i would love to do more voiceover work not gonna lie uh i don't do accents but i would love to do more voiceover work not you know that would be that would be fun for me so, so yeah, I think for me, I'm, I'm going to try funneling a lot more energy into my channel, into content. And, um, and yeah, just, I, I really want to push the envelope of what I've done so far and, and try more and new things. Um, yeah. TK? Uh, 2021, I'm going to steal everybody's girlfriends. Um <laughs> Damn, how are you going to steal a girlfriend I ain't got yet? Though? I mean, seriously, Ooh. can I get one first? Ooh. Can I get one first? I got 12 months. <laughs> it's, it's coming for you, babe. Anyway. You going to uh, be 13. But more... Um, <laughs> um, so uh, my big thing for 2021 is I'm going to finish and pitch a novel. Hell yeah. But I should write it first. Uh, but yeah, I'm all, I'm all, I'm gonna finish and pitch it. I'm doing it. 
Uh, I have a couple that I know for a fact that I want to happen. It's going to happen in 2021. Um, one is pending, you know, the pandemic, but I need to go perform outside, <laughs> please. I was a whole actor in 2020 and didn't need to perform barely any at all in 2020. So I need that. Um, hopefully, you know, Sweeney Todd still happens in the, the summer. Anywho, uh, I, I want to, I want to create content for D and D that is published in some way, shape or form. Cause I have the ability to do so. I just want it to happen. Um, and I'm focusing on more of the, the writing and the, um, the creation that's on paper versus just what comes out of my throat. Um, and I really want that. And I said D and D specifically because look, it's okay to like D and D, y'all. I really like D and D. Um, so that's that. However, my biggest one is I, 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 I joked about it, but it's going to happen. I will have an EP out this year. I will actually do vocal shit and produce vocal shit and have an actual EP, um, in some way, shape, or form this year because that's what I want. Um, let me use my voice for good. Um, and actually be a vo- damn vocalist. <laughs> so that's that's me for sure. Um, look, uh, I, I think we could go on forever. Uh, we can keep going. I know Gabe needs to bounce because he is doing things. How are y'all feeling? Y'all want to keep going for a little bit longer or y'all want to call it? I can go. I'm going to just time this pizza with whenever we're done. Speaking of, I'm going to run away because my pizza is 30 minutes ahead of schedule. Oh, I here. actually also have to to dip, but let's we go ahead. A, we can have fifty. We'll just have half the chat. I mean, because I, I still got one. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I I also need to figure out what I'm doing for food. Yeah. So to be to be to be honest, wow, you just gonna leave me and <laughs> I was like, damn, I mean, you look, just left I her can, out to dry. Look, huh? I can take the I can point it at the kitchen. It's just <laughs> you know, it's just a little awkward. You know what? You know what? <laughs> We can we can we can call it we can call it that all that means is and again we're not we, it won't always be conversations about being black and and being people of color because that's our lives every day but that doesn't mean we can't come back together as a community and chit chat and drink and cause I didn't drink anything other than coffee and water this time let me come back with a cocktail uh for part two um, go get a cocktail now I ain't going nowhere I'm gonna order pizza. <laughs> I need to. Oh well, shit. Oh no, we can't. Well, stop now you. Now. Well, say, well, now you <laughs> have to. Talk, you talked all. Okay, there we go. Jesus. See? Oh, now we no. got we got a rage. Y'all can't go nowhere. Sorry. I'm about to go eat. <laughs> okay, you ain't stopping that. Okay. Uh, you go eat. I'm not saying you have to leave your pizza. I'm about oh. to order a pizza because it's gonna take 40 minutes. So yes, um, I'm probably true. just gonna get some cheese at this point then because okay. I got summer so sausage and cheese. So we'll. We'll I don't do- understand summer sausage. Oh my god! <laughs> Did you not get Hickory Farms as a kid? No, actually, it was in the mall all the time, and we had a little sample platter that you walked by back when you could actually, you know, get. Remember going places? I remember going places. Um, but no, like I don't understand summer sausage. I don't. I don't like. Is it? Is it cured? Is it dry? I don't like. What is it? It's it's so, cured. It is a, it is a semi moist sausage. I actually have some. So because of DC Lacerra, it's a what, it's a what sausage? I'm not saying it again. Fuck you. So what's about to happen right now? If you need to go, go ahead and go. I will deal with the overlay. <laughs> uh, um, if you want to stay, you can stay for 30, 30 more minutes. Then I gotta go. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> you ain't gotta go home. Exactly. The overlay is yeah. gonna be effed up for a couple of minutes, and y'all can deal with it. But this is what happens live. So thank you so much for those who are uh, who are leaving. Uh, I appreciate you so much. Uh, you all have been amazing. Uh, and I can't wait to see what's next for all of us, honestly. Uh, and make sure you, you, you stay yourself point blank period, periodic table. Uh, and, uh, I, I appreciate you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Heck yes. I miss Great. all of you. Are already it's about to be just me and Tanya. <laughs> hey, you know what? Now we now we're gonna now we're gonna get real greasy. I'm about to say now they're gonna get now they're gonna start dragging right, everybody. They bring out receipts, names, everything. everything. Actually, right. I'm gonna stay on just to hear because I need I need to I need to hear what I happens. hate you. <laughs> I hate you. So I, much. I already okay. know all the sauce, so I'm gonna come back for the vod and I'm gonna be like, mm, I knew that. <laughs> but, Brian, are you leaving? Are you leaving the video? Or are you just going to chat? 
Uh, no, I'll, I'll be on the video. Oh, okay, okay. All right. I love, I love you, Gabe. I love you, Vanessa. I love you, TK. You all are amazing. Bye forever. Bye. Bye. Okay. One, 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 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're locked up. Uh, no, no, it's It's fine. It's fine. It's cool. It's cool. Dude, you gonna. I ah. figured I was gonna stay put till you fixed it, but oh I guess no, it's not. That's, that, that, that it is OBS. That ain't how it works. Go ahead, uh, okay. you hop out. I can fix it once you go. <laughs> Deuces. Thanks for having me. Okay, bye. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> now it's after dark. Now it's after dark. I'm gonna put us all at the top. Uh, uh, Y'all gonna have to deal with the overlay. Cause I'm not gonna change names because I can't do that right now. Uh, but this look, this is how we do this, y'all. I get to be Brian for a hot second. You get to be Brian for a hot second. I'm weak. I'm Ooh. Omega. This is awesome. What? What? I'm not going to try singing, but. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no, now I'm moving. Hold up. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Look, now it's you're fine. TK. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Hold on. See, this is how we got this. Well, 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 well. Boom. Um, Dospo said, if I get to be Brian, describe a cocktail. Uh, I do not. I am not at the level of Brian, so. Oop. Yes, you are. Um, sir, don't don't look around like I'm not talking to you and about you. No, oh, I was. I'm still on the <laughs> overlay screen. I forgot. Oh. I was like, Wait, I'm looking at the wrong screen. There we go. I'm like, um, I can see you on the Zoom call. Yes. So. Um. Y'all are are messy. You better make your own that, sir. If I will die on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Y'all in this fucking simple. Story. I don't know. I mean, I somehow managed to meme my own self. I don't. As somebody who is pushing fifty, that's just impressive that I managed to somehow make a meme off a cooking stream. I'll take it. That is true. But hey, uh, Brian, check that. Twitter. I I tweeted some summer sausage at you. Oh, why you What's with this summer sausage? This on because... me. <laughs> that look. If I was gonna give you that kind of sausage, it wouldn't be during a live stream. That's true. See, okay, so we went to a winery. We went to a winery in Virginia, and yeah, they were like, we, you know, they had their own cheeses, they had their own summer sausage, and I'm just sitting there like, and uh, my friend X, who was with me, is all like, ready, like, oh, you know, summer sausage. And I'm just like, what is it? Why is it? Su is it sausage or not? Why putting summer on it makes me think something weird. True. Like. I like how everybody's like, you're so lewd. And I'm like, get your mind out the fucking gutter. Oh, true. I mean, I can't talk. I, mine's always in there, but you know, and now I'm making I'll me like, it's a, it's a zip up. No, it's you showed, you showed the fur. You got to let it out there. It's just, it's just a onesie, y'all. It's just a onesie. It's just a onesie. Look, Look um, I, I made it work for now. I know, I, I know I put Brian in the wrong spot, but I, I wanted to get all be at the top because I'm over it. You're now TK. Okay. <laughs> Um, I actually, so the, so the best thing I have found is trying to hunt down the swag that, that charities do. So this is like, this is like fundraising swag from St. Jude, but I found the company that makes these and I have added Ooh. several of these to my wish list because it is, I don't know why I have avoided the lined fleeced onesie for so long. This has been helping me out through so many cold days and we're about to hit, I think we're going to get cold, um, in February is probably going to hit because it's been super warm. Mm. At least in the mid Atlantic East coast, it's been ridiculously warm except for like the few days surrounding light snowflakes. Otherwise. Yeah. Ugh. Look, um, I don't, I don't like the cold. I deal with it, but I don't like the cold. I'm not a fan. Um, so going places that I know are colder is hard. Like going up to new England, um, you know, we we made a lot of jokes ahead of C two E two. We made a lot of jokes about how cold it was going to be, mm. um, and it really wasn't even that bad. It was it was cold. It was cold. It was as cold as I expected, which was fine. But it wasn't that bad. But yeah, I my worst was visiting Massachusetts over like Martin Luther King weekend, and I I was like, I'm never visiting this place ever again. I, I don't care what I don't care what month it is. I'm never coming back. <laughs> And keep in mind, we have someone from Canada in the group that was still complaining. And I'm like, really? I, I was, I thought for sure he'd be out there in like shorts and a t-shirt, like just running. Right? <laughs> right? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. But it was just like, you're from Canada. How are you going to come here? And not for real winter. It was nice for February. And y'all were like, I'm so cold. And I'm like, 
then come back in real winter okay look i am hoping that the world opens again so i can show i can show up somewhere and be and be be gets loud and proud in person look zooms is cute but i'm over zoom I I'm, gonna so, I'm gonna be so freaking obnoxious when we can At go least. out to cons again i mm, obviously i mean like friendly obnoxious but i'll be so damn obnoxious because i ain't been seeing people in who knows how long right <laughs> no i'm gonna be i'm gonna take like one it's gonna take one convention for me to be like no one perceived me i've done my panel goodbye <laughs> Right? Okay, you're probably right about that. <laughs> One convention, that's all it's going to take. It just makes me so mad. Because, yeah, I, I mean, I, I went to Gen Con in 2019, which is, wow. I went to Gen Con in 2019, but, like, I was only there for one day. So, like, it didn't really feel like I was, like, doing a con. I just went to get see people and left. CTE2 was my first and only con because after CTE2, we all got shut down. And it's sad. And it's so weird that, you know, technically that year is about to be over. And it's going to be the C2E2 time again, but we won't be there, obviously. But it's just, oh. Uh, well, C2E2 they, got moved to December. Didn't it's they move it? Down. Oh. Yeah. So. Oh, it oh. did. It's about to be cold as hell. So now, that's hopefully. real winter if you'd like it. I want it. Yeah, I'd probably be doing PAX. If it's if it's the same time as PAX, isn't it going to be as PAX on Um, now? Hold on. I'm looking up dates while we talk. Okay. Well, C2E2 still follows me. I'm surprised. While we talk, we're still going for another 20-ish minutes um, because we can. Um, and it's my channel. I'm not going to do what the hell I want. <laughs> Reminder, we are still raising money for Kwanzaa. We are at $6,424.69. Where are we at? Nice. We need a little under $1,100, y'all. Come on. Seriously. And, I mean, can I at least get can I at least get $45 so we can get $6,469.69? I gave, I gave it the office already. What about you, Brian? The off I I already I gave to push it to sixty nine earlier. Oh, that was um, you that did that. Okay. I, I I started the trend and I said, okay, now people who hate who hate odd numbers, go and fix it because that's. I hate to do this and I hate to I hate to like to play off of that, but yeah, I also tell people if you're raising money for charity, tell people to like get you to like eleven cents or like nine cents. Because somebody out there will be so bothered by it. <laughs> but they'll be like, I have to fix it. I just have to fix it. And then multiple people try to fix it at once. So it just keeps getting worse. And just keeps going up. <laughs> oh my. So here we have the conundrum of PAX Unplugged and C2E2 are now the same weekend. What? PAX Unplugged and C2E2 are now the same weekend. Oh. Uh, well, see you in Philly. I was going to yeah, say. Yeah, I'm going to Philly. Uh, Philly is, yeah. It's, it's got to be Philly. For reasons. Also for PAX. Like C2E2 was fun, but I, I missed out. I was supposed to go to PAX Unplugged, and then I had a performance that weekend, and I thought I can get, uh, I thought it was supposed to be an off world weekend, and it wasn't. So I had to give my, uh, not had to, but I gave my uh, my ticket away um, for PAX Unplugged. Uh, but I didn't get to go. So yeah, next year, well this year, if, it, if we're open, hopefully we are. Yeah, PAX is happening. I would hope by December we're all good. Look, I'm a hope. We all know what what this world. The, the, the I don't want to say the IQ because that's hitting at their um at their education, but or but but people ain't smart. It's just, the, the, the entitlement has just been I. It has been ridiculous. The entitlement of like, I'm fine. I don't want to change things, and I just need the world to. I just need the the world to get its shit together. Like. I just need the world to get its shit together. I am already looking at the calendar. We got 19 days. When that when January 20th hits, I need like a new path to start being paid forward uh -huh. and people to get their shit together. Because we already got in five days, the current resident two miles away from me is doing a rally, which I'm already like, well, fuck you, man. Just fuck you. I'm tired of you. Look, yeah, yeah. I mean, we got a couple more they weeks and he could get out, so. I'm going to be sitting there wondering, are we about to see a coup or are we about to see history or both? Or I, don't both. Honestly, I honestly do not think he is talented enough to pull off a coup. Nobody said he'd be leading it. I do think, though, if one was going to happen, they would have tried it when he officially, 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 officially lost. He know how to keep getting those recounts and he lost even more. Each time a recount happened. Uh, <laughs> so well, no, the, 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 the new thing, and this isn't, and this is fuck it. It's after dark hours. We just talking. 
apparently he thinks that Pence can walk in and be like, no, for real, Trump won. And I'm like, that's not how that works at all. Right. Because because the VP has to the VP has to officially accept the Electoral College results. And yeah, everyone's like, well, v, well, Pence could do this. And it's like, no, 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 that's not. It's ceremonial. No. So you are the whole ass president <laughs> and literally don't know how this works. Yep. Because mm. he's a bum. Um, but no, yeah, <laughs> it's just I am going to jump with joy when that when I love Cheetos, but I don't love him and he's gone and it's going to be great. I literally have <laughs> literally, my first I, I said on Facebook, my first meal of 2020 was a bag of flaming hot cheetos so <laughs> you're right, you're right. Yes, Jan- january 20th is just gonna be a cheeto stream i'll be like nah my hands are gonna be filthy we're just gonna go oh my in. god that'll be so much fun just <laughs> like these are the only cheetos we like. the only cheeto. that's it just that's it oh you think i wouldn't get a whole a gallon of, of, of flaming hot cheetos and guess like go in like wrap my controllers you know. in plastic wrap and just go oh no i'm gonna <laughs> Greg Tito taught me how to eat them with chopsticks. Not with that's chopsticks. A lot. That's a lot to do. I can use chopsticks, though. But well, wait, I can. Oh, but, well, I like the puffy ones. Those are. I like oh, I've got ones. Cheetos behind like me, actually. Puffs. I got Cheetos a liquid. Me. I mean, technically, I do. I got some Cheeto like... puffs. The Flame right. Hot Cheeto puffs. <laughs> right. Oh, my and gosh. I'll, now we're talking about su- I, I have My brain has gone over to sushi. <laughs> I don't know why, but I looked at Grubhub and that was the first thing that popped up was get this quick. Look, Sushi do me a favor, y'all. Do, look, the, y'all, y'all know me. It's my channel and I am uh, unapologetic and I don't give two shits about how anybody uh, thinks I should uh, act on my own channel. Thank you all so much for donating to um, to uh, Color of Change uh, and I want you to keep doing that. However, you know, uh, there is a thing called this and make sure you look Get these uh two uh, amazing people dinner tonight because I said so. <laughs> the links you know are what? right there. The links are right there. Get them. Get them dinner no. tonight. Because my no. PayPal, my PayPal is attached to Seamless, so I'll take it. I won't say no. Um, hey, my lady confetti, pos- what's up? Hey, hey, confetti, hey. Come on, though. Uh, yeah, ooh. Yeah, if you are subscribed to my lady confetti, you see those uh, amazing Kwanzaa uh, uh, emotes. This is my Kwanzaa adjacent emote right here. Get that fist up. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm in a similar situation as TK. Like, you know, because of my day job, like when people basically do the nice thing and send support, it all goes back into the stream. But I, I definitely, when someone says you need to buy dinner and all of a sudden, like they're kind enough, I'm like, okay, I guess that's what's happening tonight then. Um, Look, I said what I said. If, I, if dinner shows up, I have to put on real clothes. So, like, <laughs> Look, I have a dashiki on with some pajama pants. So, but see, I, gotta, but see, see I wouldn't know camera. those were. Per- I would not know those <laughs> yeah, were pajama uh, pants. That look good. That's a good. That's, that look good. <laughs> <laughs> because look. Brian and I are of the era where we had jeans that look like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Who no. out here remembers? Who out here remembers Chess King? <laughs> oh, oh my God! You went way the fuck back. <laughs> remember malls yes <laughs> i remember those um, but the fact that you rolled out chess king it, yeah. because when you said when i saw the check when i saw the check pattern like the the houndstooth i was like yeah that's oh yeah mm. mm-hmm. Mm-mm. um Mm-mm. okay i need someone to explain to me how is spicy mayo a side dish i'm sorry what i'm i'm placing an order for sushi because I haven't had sushi in forever. And one of the side items is, is a side of spicy mayo. I guess it's wasabi mayo, but my brain is just like, it's wasabi mayo. And some people like a certain, certain rolls have it on top, but spicy mayo is a condiment for sushi, but it's, Depending on how much fire it has, it is actually sometimes too, too fire. See, y'all got me wanting some damn sushi now. Um, Fuck it. Yeah, no, okay, y'all, that, y'all have y'all have ruined me now. Okay. Nah. Like, look, look, do I need to? Okay. okay. I'm, is, it, is it a sushi night? Apparently, this, this, apparently, it's a sushi, sushi night. night. It's a sushi um, night. Okay. I guess. Okay. I feel like sushi tonight. Look, it's a sushi night. I guess. <laughs> then let's do it. Let's do it. While we all order sushi, how's the chat? Yeah, how y'all doing? What are y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> right. Look, I spent a year in Japan. I miss good sushi. 
Oh no. My one of my favorite things to do, like I mean, we talk about what you're gonna do when you when you can go out again. The place that I would go is I would probably save up until like Friday. And they did sushi happy hour at a bar downtown, the Hamilton, which I don't Ooh. think I got to show Tanya when she was here. Um, and essentially, like you like you can sit at the sushi bar. So they actually have the chefs there. You can watch them make it. It's not something that they pulled out of the fridge in the back. Mm-hmm. And all of their sushi is half off for like from three to six. So I'm in there being my bougie ass self, ordering Prosecco and just tearing through sushi. Wow. Like just ruining it. And then trying to walk my drunk ass home. So, you know. <laughs> you know, it's you all good. It's all do. good. I um, may be ordering too much sushi. Uh-oh. but that's okay. Why are you green? Oh, Who? you are green, sir. Who? You got to be you. seen. Green. What? Could so be called green. dead. Red. If anybody I... knows the reference I just sang, I love I you. I was going to say, are you the whizzing at me first off? I am. <laughs> okay. Um... How I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do anything. <laughs> no, I know you didn't do anything. Um, this CB, happened. How did you green me? I didn't do nothing. I've been greened. <laughs> no, when um, it's not easy being green. Green. <laughs> <laughs> look, look. You knew what you were getting. <laughs> look, now we should just we should do Twitch things before it goes away. Oh, I, is it already oh, gone? On, I have oh, not done it. Okay, let me make that my second tab. I'm gonna stop your video real quick and then restart okay. it. It might be. It might be. Okay. Okay. One. Uh, okay. Uh, restart it. Nope. It's on you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this is so, <laughs> so weird. Strange. This happened when we were setting up for the finale of Rivals. And I don't know if um, Sharif should is still I, there. Should I leave the call and come back in? Try it. Or let me. We'll let me, survive. Can, hold on. Let me stop my video. Uh, I don't think it's an HDMI, Chris. It is. Um, nope. Wow. Okay. I'm I'm gonna be raw by Oc. This happened when we were setting up for the finale of Rivals. Did it really? And wow. I, yeah, because Sharif. I don't know if he's still in the chat. <laughs> But like Sharif kept saying you're green and it, that's what it looked like. Like he took a photo of it and sent it to me. I'm not going to change the overlay because it's going to mess up if if he, if I if I move it. So I'm wait, he's coming back right now. Yeah, there you are. You're fine. Oh, nope. oh. ooh, what is happening? I broke everything. Wow. I'm going to Google. I'm going to Google uh Zoom <laughs> turning green cuz this is the second time I've seen this now. I mean, green I can just. Laggy. That's I green mean, tinted laggy zoom. How weird. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is so much fun. I love having it. A moment like, like, it, it. It's welcome to streaming, everybody, in case you didn't know. <laughs> Facts. Can I tell you how much I hate that when you search for stuff, the first thing is always a video? Fuck it. No, fucking Reddit. Ah, uh, well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, um, okay, let me do that. Oh, God. Oh, God. Bedwings is fine. Tasty food. I gotta write my shit. That was all right. Uh, tasty. Yeah, Look, we're so in, in, in ten minutes anyway, y'all. It's okay. <laughs> Brian just gets to be green. It's fine. I mean, if nobody minds, I don't mind. It's I don't know why. That's so weird that you're, um, that you're green, though. Okay, let me go over to Toku because they are down in Dupont Circle and they do not take long. Uh, let me. Get Anywho, them. well, I have sushi on the way. I'm about to I have never, right now. I have never seen that happen to someone else. It has happened to me plenty of times. Oh, hold on. Let me add two more of those because those are buy and we get one free. I like how we're all like, what, what, what can we get? I'm, like, I'm, gonna, get my <laughs> I'm gonna get my salmon to Gary. I don't know about y'all. If but... someone donates a hundred dollars <laughs> a couple of change, maybe we can get a Kermit impression from uh, Brian. I think so. If he consents, I, I think so. I, I think oh, so. Uh, Kurt, Kurt, her, her, her. Wait, wait. I used, I used to have this. I used, I used to have this. Kermy. Because I didn't, I used to watch like, I used to watch like the Muppet Sesame Street all the time. Like, you know, what would, it, but he would always do the thing. I don't know. I oh, can't God. really do a Kermit either. The best I can yeah, do is like, like Kermit T. Frog here. Like, that's all I can do. Like, like that's, that's the, that's the, that's the place. That's the yeah. place to get into. But, um, hold on. What's our, wait, what's our, what's our total at? 
Uh, six six thousand five hundred ninety-seven bucks and thirteen cents. Six thousand five hundred ninety-seven thirteen cents is not enough. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what is happening? <laughs> we don't know anymore. We really oh my god, know. I'm getting the Obama's um, Choice roll. But honestly, we are we are less than one thousand dollars away from the current goal of seventy five hundred dollars for color change. Troublemakers for troublemakers for Kwanzaa raising money out here. So if you got that tittle, if you got that Tiltify link, grab it, copy it, share it out. It took me a minute to get there, but I'm drinking, so I apologize. It's okay. I I need something with this wine because this wine is very strong. Also, wow! It, like, I'm looking at green me, and I'm just like, oh, okay, that's very strange. But whatever, it's fine. You don't have like a virtual background turned on right now, do you? No, this is just my this is just my living room. Well, I mean, like, go in Zoom and like go to like your video settings and see if like. Oh, I can try. I mean, yeah, yeah I just try turn, turn, off. just turn, just say turn if anything's off, checked we'll off. I have a green screen, turn it off and stuff like that. Um, it's weird. Like it happened while we were setting up for rivals and I had no idea why. Let's turn that on real quick and then nope. turn it off. Mm-mm. No, no. Nope. Yeah. Okay. I mean, hey, it's fine. Ain't no thing. It's just gonna make for a real interesting video upload. Look, I mean, the entire thing was up like that. People left and then and oh, then no. moving stuff around. Oh, see, see, it's still happening. There we go, boom. Twitch, okay. Twitch things closes tonight. Today. Oh. Today's it. Should we come back and stream Twitch things? Oh, I can, um, but can y'all can. Unless it's uh, like uh, it's like after like late, late, but y'all probably got stuff to do. I'm I'm playing Among Us in thirty three. minutes. <laughs> Yay! Good for you. Yeah. Okay, you and Among Us. I need to know. A, how did you like get in with all these damn people? And B, <laughs> do you play anything else anymore? Yes, I still play like Overwatch and Skyrim's and all that stuff. Uh, I mean, no, honestly, Felicia Day hit me up one time. I was like, "Hey, you want to play Among Us?" And I'm like, "Yeah." Oh, uh, oh, I can, I, I can go. Hey, it's my channel. Um, Sunday, I'm, I'll be streaming Among Us with Felicia Day in the Guild. Um, so, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's really what happened. Yeah, I'm playing with. Chilled chaos and some fuck today. Mm. Mm. Yeah, like I have played it once. I do know how to play now, but we need to get a group together. I'm just not a fan of it. That's I, valid. You know. Well, I think it. I think it's really going to depend on who you're playing with. Yeah, honestly. Well, the problem with me right now is that not only that, but I've also not played enough that I like. I get it, and I get the tasks. So that one moment when you are the imposter and you actually don't know how to fake it i would be like i don't know um but yeah it's like um oh crap i lost my train of thought it's like the uh the other one dead by daylight like the, it's just a really popular thing right now that a lot of people are into and i am just not i haven't been able to get into it it's, but uh, to be <laughs> fair i have it bought on ps4 i just haven't played it and i don't know why oh i think okay twitch things has asked me to download an update i'm not sure if it's gonna work I mean, I played. I played Among Us all of once, so I feel that. I don't know. For me, it's like like everybody who was on the chats, a few certain other people. Um, like I'd play with Kelly. I'd play with Doctor B. I would play with other people, but it's it's a who are you playing with, and B, how much is chat egging on the the hyper competitive part of it. Because, like, I feel like we would get the Brian that jumps out when we play, like, The Division or other shooty games. Don't give me that look. I've met you. No, you'd get the werewolf, Brian. What? It's a, uh, so werewolf or mafia, like, one of Mm. us, one of us is, one of us is the other, and it's like an in-person talking game. Mm -hmm. That's what you would get. And I played werewolf, but I've not played it with you. Yeah. Look, um, there's an online game, and you don't have to talk to people, thank goodness, but it's uh, uh, Town of Salem, which is the same thing as Mafia and Werewolf. I was in that for, like, at least a year. It's, it's such a, it's, it was fun for me. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I mean, Among Us, Mafia, Werewolf, they're all the kind of the same thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's fun. Yeah, it's, it's, it's perfectly fine. Um, hold on, did that not work? Wait a second. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Uh, what time is your call time for Among Us? 
Uh, I'm gonna be having it, I guess, because I need to use the restroom and, and cuddle with 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 this Rumple over here somewhere uh, oh, for a bit before him. Rumple? He's on the couch being a butt. Um, Rumple. <laughs> Kelly, Rumple. I just said I'd play with you. He's not gonna come. Um, he's, is, she, he's tired. Is, she, is she all capsing that nobody wants to play with her? <laughs> is she all ooh, caught her out? Oop. <laughs> we see you, especially when you use all. I didn't even I didn't even look at the chat yet. I'm just guessing. <laughs> But no, we're gonna, oh my god! Fall. I finally <laughs> lost some frames. That hasn't happened yet. Yay! Um, it's not a good thing, but still. Anywho, uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and uh, start calling. It. I do want y'all to like uh, say who you are and where we can find you and all that goodness, uh, because I said so. Uh, and after that, we're gonna go ahead and raid uh, Safista, um, and and I'll show them sure some some love. On. Oh, that that is true. Um, make sure she's still on while while Brian talks. Brian goes. Um, well, sure. Hi, I am Brian. I'm a Bohemian. I am currently a lovely shade of emerald green. I suspect this is what everyone's going to be into in 2021. You saw it here first because I am a trendsetter, a fashion leader, an influencer. Um, I'm also a variety streamer on Twitch three days a week. Um, I love playing uh, action RPGs and cozy games and uh, baking and talking and RPGs. I am going to be in Rivals Season 9. Um, I am very loud on the Twitters and I take a lot of pictures of my food. Um, so yeah, I'd love to see you in my chat in 2021. It'd be great. And thank you very much, CB, for having me for this. Heck yeah. Tanya. Um, I am on the internet occasionally talking about things and stuff. Uh, I don't have anything to do on the weekends until Rivals happens. Um, but Rivals is back January 31st, um, our usual time slot. And I am doing something else that is not yet announced. So I just realized I can't talk about it. Um, and then I am going to join uh, Like Seven Spoon for part two of our one on one D&D session with my randomly generated uh, Dragonkin monk on Ooh. January 7th on their channel. And after that, I'm just kind of chilling and trying to do some other some other stuff and get my apartment in order for the new year um and you know just do a whole lot of things that i can't talk about yet which really sucks because i want to yell about things that i'm doing in this coming year no yeah and maybe one day we'll actually finish dungeon crossing who knows oh wow yeah i believe I we at least need to record the finale or something we need to figure that out true but yes, I just find me on the internet, cipher tier everywhere. Um, say hi, be nice, or I'll block you. Because my block Oop. list is about a six digits long at this point. And Look. I have no shame. I will do so easily. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Um, and you all know me. Hi, my name is Omega Jones, also known as Critical Bard. Uh I'll I'll boost me too because I can. Um uh uh I, I do a lot of stuff. Uh you can find me many places. I'll be back. I don't know if I'm gonna stream it. I really don't know if I'm going to stream it. I might stream it. Yeah, I might stream the Among Us game. Uh, but I'll be playing Among Us in 30 minutes with Chill Chaos and Vince Castle and a lot of other folk. Um, that's fun. Uh, tomorrow at 3 p.m. I'm at Transplanter RPG uh, Twitter. Um, myself and Gabe are going to be playing Twins. Uh, we're guesting on their uh, interlude um, uh, episode. It's a Hot Spring episode, y'all. Um, uh, so uh, come check that out. I'm really excited to be playing with them uh tomorrow and then on sunday be back here i'll be uh playing more among us with uh felicia day in the guild um doing what i do uh but thank you all so much we have raised six thousand six hundred and seventeen dollars and thirty thirteen cents um i mean the 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 front rate is going to be going for a little bit until i end the campaign so let's see if we can hit that seven thousand five hundred whether we're on uh, we're live or not um but this has been amazing. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to uh, Pleasantly Twisted, Vanessa, Gabe, James Games, Gabe, uh, and uh, TK Joins Afraid, TK, uh, for joining us as well. Also to Tanya and Brian for being here and just being amazing people. Let's go ahead and raid Safista. Use that good old Raiders Ooh, nice. making trouble because that's what we do. And if you're new here, I like to say something very simple, and that's keep making trouble wherever you go. 
it is up to us as creators, as performers, as people who exist in this community to shake up this system one troublemaker at a time. Um, fun fact, in history, bards were the ones who shook up the system and, and caused things to happen. We can raise kingdoms and tear them down with one word. Um, so use your voice, use who you are and go forth and live your best life. And again, shake up the system one troublemaker at a time. I love you all. I'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>